Okay. I think we're online. And I think the audio is working this time. Camera's definitely working. Um, okay, well, everybody in the chat, let me know if there's any issues. I don't think there's going to be any issues starting this week. So let's welcome everybody to another Friday edition, Saturday morning for us here in Yokohama, Japan, edition. 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 I said edition a lot. Of our weekly hang out here with the Raw Denim World, the Naked and Famous Denim Day live stream. Hey, everybody. I hope everyone had a nice week. Good getting into their weekend. You're helping us kick our weekend off with a, a fun hangout with all the Raw Denim World here. We've got a bunch of regulars here in the live, in the live chat. And uh, we'll start off with two things. Let me know where you're from and hit that like button, everybody. So if you're watching live, let me know uh, where you're from here in the chat section. If you're watching the replay, let me know down below where you're tuning in from. Let's see how international, how global we can get this chat. Uh, we've got a bunch of regulars here, like I said. The more hello, hello, BD is in the house. Francisco Michael, hello from Chicago. Rice W5, hello from Birmingham, UK. Richard Murphy, hello from Dallas, Texas. We've got Phoenix in from Victoria. Regina, Regina in from Seattle. Hello, hello. Pedro Cortez, Northwest Indiana, the more DC, MD, VA, DMV. Beat. There's a lot of a lot of a lot of letters. <laughs> BD Okay, I'm in Spirit Four and Work Flannel Welland, Ontario. That's a great combination there. Uh Okay, I'm Spirits and Flannels. You've uh that that's it. That's the uniform, my friend. P Gims, that's a new face here in the chat, I believe. Hello from Germany. Godzilla san. Please explain various types of cotton. Texas, Zimbabwe, Sufin Gold, etc. Sure, we can do that today. That's uh, that's no problem. Also, on the agenda for today, we've got a bunch of spring, summer. I got a big pile of them over there. Spring, summer, 22 previews to show you guys. So there's a lot of previews happening today. So you definitely want to stick around for that. Um, we're going to be answering lots of questions. Um, you know, as our, our live streams are, we answer lots of questions. Mm -hmm. We rant about all kinds of stuff. Definitely some off-topic things, a little bit here and there. Try not to go too off the deep end. Um, and then uh, lots of previews, and then we'll get into snack time. Ray Tattooed Boy is in the house. Hello, hello. James Jones checking in from Ohio. Well, welcome to the stream. Ohio. Uh, um, oh, Regina, the first pronunciation was right, not how you say the city in Canada. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. In Canada, we have a city called Regina in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Uh, it's a, uh, yeah. It's a small city. Small city. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice city. Yeah, there's Regina, there's Saskatoon, and... Saskatoon is the main city, right? Saskatoon is the capital of Saskatch... Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. No, is it? No, is it? It's Regina. Is it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. And now I forgot what... There's a city in between Regina and Saskatoon that I forget what it's called. And, oh, man, I used to remember it. Anyways, if anybody remembers... It's kind of like um, uh, Kitchener. Ontario? No. Well, Kitchener is in Ontario, but um, no. Oh, like a b between... Yeah, Toronto, Toronto and, and, and uh, Montreal. Mm -hmm. There's Kitchener. Kingston. Sorry. Oh, my God. I haven't been in Canada for so long. <laughs> Kingston, Ontario, not Kitchener, Ontario. Kingston, Ontario is like the in-between, so you know you're mm -hmm. in between. Yeah. But, yeah, between Saskatoon and Regina, um, oh, you got to Google it. Why? Yeah, I just I I need Why to know. I need to know. I, I need to know the answer now. The only three cities. No, but uh, one of our staff was from there, and I always remembered it. Swift Current. That's it. It's very useless information for a lot of people, but it's Swift Current, Saskatchewan is the in-between city. It's like the Kingston, Ontario of Saskatchewan. <laughs> there you go. So if you're ever in Saskatchewan, you you might drive through Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Okay, well, there you have it. Um, uh, Godzilla-san, good question. What's the minimum amount of genes you should have to be called a denim head? The minimum is, I would say, wow. one. One pair. It doesn't matter how many genes you have. You could have a thousand genes and maybe not even be considered a denim head. You might not care about the genes that you have. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's a lot of people like that. Yeah, I would have. You know, there's business the owners who, who own... Well, Shops I mean, that carry jeans. I mean, you know, they're not denim heads. They're business people, right? Mm -hmm. 
But uh, a denim head, I think, is anyone who uh, enjoys jeans as more than just a piece of, you know, clothing. They see more than utility out of it, right? This is a, a product that they, they appreciate, they want to study, they want to learn more about. And even you, you know, you don't have to be the most knowledgeable about it, you know, but if you have a passion for it, you're a denim head to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Gazelle Town wearing my left hand twelves. Great. I'm wearing my solid black salvage today. Me and too. Risa is too. We've got uh, we're matching. I didn't I didn't even think we did this intentionally. No, I well, there you have it. So. You can see there are they're both faded actually quite you know, yeah. they're coming along. Mine started washed. Yeah. Also, so I'm a little yeah. ahead. Yeah, I got a big old phone fade right there on the front. Yeah. Got a giant uh, galaxy phone, so makes big phone fades. <sighs> Uh, Ray Tattooed Boy, how were the Freddy sales? A lot of my friends said the sizes were sold out. Yes, the uh, the, the Nightmare on Elm Street denim sold pretty quickly. Uh, on Tattoo and Yoko, there's very little availability left. Um, oh, very little availability left. And the just guys, yeah, huh? yeah. So we just got like two sizes left in the Super Guy, one size left in the Easy Guy. There's a little bit more inventory left on. Uh, naked and famous denim nyc.com so if you go to the, the the new york store's website they have a little bit more inventory left i know that tati and yoko is the more popular website so a lot of people head over there first um so if you're still looking for something maybe you looked at tati and yoko and you 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 don't see your size you might find it on new york but i don't suspect that the inventory in new york is going to last mm-hmm. they still mm-hmm. have all the yeah. sizes in it, denim jackets yeah so. Good. Okay, well that's good. Risa, like I don't know if you heard that, but Risa said they, they have all the sizes left in the denim jacket, and uh, so yeah, if you're looking for something, head over there, uh, but don't wait much longer. You know, it was our first kind of midnight release mm-hmm. that we've ever done. I don't know if we've ever not. I think it's the first one. Yeah. So, um, I, I wasn't sure if it was gonna be like a mad r- like you know usually we do 11 a.m. releases, mm-hmm. so I wasn't sure if it was gonna be a mad rush. And I was also nervous that some people were going to miss out because it was a midnight release. Mm-hmm. And some people did miss out because it was a midnight release, unfortunately. But, um, uh, yeah, it, uh, it went well. It was, things went quickly. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that, that's the way it goes with these releases. Especially, you know, coming off of, like, the, the, the Friday the 13th, the Jason release. Mm-hmm. Like, I was expecting it to be popular. Mm-hmm. But boy, yeah, did those go instant. instant. Yeah. So I knew that we would be, we'd have a similar reaction with Freddy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it being later at night, I mm-hmm. thought maybe it might be a little bit slower. So it technically was a little bit slower than, than, than Jason. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think it's all going to be gone uh, by the end of the weekend, mm-hmm. or at least most of it. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, think, well, first, thanks everybody for supporting that release. I'm, I'm glad that everyone likes this horror stuff. Um, yeah. it, it makes me happy because I get to do horror stuff. Um, we are technically, I and mean, we're in talks. We're, we're working on the next one. Mm-hmm. We're work, I can't say, I, it's really, we're, we're at the talking phase right now. So we're like, I, not, not, nothing is even close. So anyways, we are working on something. So there will the be. next one is Jojo. There's Jojo, but there's more horror stuff mm. that, uh, I mean, Brandon reached out to a couple of things. Okay. And, uh. He's just in the talking phase right now. So nothing, we're getting there, but there will be more horror, uh, hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're going to keep this going until we we got all the monsters and killers and everything uh, under our belt. Um, Regina, Hellraiser, please. There's a lot of, Hellraiser from L was here. Pedro Cortez, zombies, got to be zombies. (laughs) It's Killer Clowns, I'll be sad. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. No, it's not going to be Killer Clowns, not yet. Child's Play, Francisco, Michael, right? Risa hates Chucky. I just can't just... stand it. I can't even stand it. <laughs> Scary for her. Uh, to be fair, I think one day that might, might have to happen. You got. I you... mean, it's very iconic, but yeah. I really yeah, yeah. cannot yeah. even yeah. look at it. Yeah. Phoenix Dolan Ghostface. I would love to do another Wes Craven. Ghostface would be fun from Scream. Um, uh, Swamp Thing. Evil Dead. Man, you guys know. The, you know all the franchises. You know what we love. And uh, at some point, just like, you know, with some of the other collaboration talk that we have, you know, we, we seem to be on the same wavelength with the, the things that we like. So 
if you like it, you know that I like it, um, and we're gonna work on that. Vitaly Gremlins. Hey, I'm not, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say right now, even if even if it was signed, I wouldn't tell you right now. Well, no, that's not true. Once it's signed, I can tell you. Yeah. But we're before, we're well before that, so I can't uh, can't acknowledge uh, it. But um, I will say this. I will say this. None, <laughs> none of you have got it yet. You. Don't need to be pushed so hard to spill the beans. But I like spilling the beans. <laughs> you love spilling <laughs> the beans. Sharknado from Justin uh, Brand Mac Halloween BD Halloween. We'll, 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 hopefully, we'll be able to do a Halloween a Michael Myers one uh, one day. But like I said, none of you have got it yet. Uh, Mr. Overlord fourteen thousand. The Scranton Strangler. <laughs> oh, I would love <laughs> yeah, to do that. If we have that office <laughs> collaboration. I don't know if that would make the cut. We would have to make so many jeans. We'd have to make a lot of jeans. The Scranton Strangler would be funny because, but I think it would just be really inside joke. Like you'd have to be so inside Naked and Famous Denim to understand us wanting to do a horror jean even within the office collaboration that we did, <laughs> the Scranton Strangler. Or uh, what was uh, Dwight's character when he was uh, the, oh, the, in the environmental? The, yeah. uh, um. Uh, what's it called? Oh man, uh, what is it called? Oh man, I mean, someone's gonna get it in the yeah. chat, but uh, <laughs> the electric city. Yeah, what was Dwight's uh, uh, environmental character's name? Um, Recyclops? Uh, yeah, something was like it Recyclops? That. Yeah. <laughs> uh, White Lightning, Super Mayo Bros. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Francisco Michael, Leprechaun. Is it Leprechaun? You don't have it. Even if you had it. Computron, no, Computron, no, Computron was, was like, Michael's like version of Siri. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Before Dwight Siri. played yeah, it, yeah, but yeah. it was Michael's. Abel S. writes, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, you know, Rock and Jelly Bean put out a Texas Chainsaw Massacre poster uh -huh. like two days ago with Mondo. So Mondo, they, uh, they make a lot of like m uh, movie memorabilia, art and things like that. And... I totally blanked on ordering that thing. Mm. Like, it, it, it was a... Uh, anyway. Were you the, aware of it? I was aware of it because I saw it on their social media, uh -huh. and then I just forgot, and then the next morning I saw it, I went to the website, obviously it was gone. Like, those movie posters on, like, Mondo, Bottleneck Gallery, Vice Press, certain ones, they're gone in, like, one minute. Like, mm -hmm. Reese has been here with me while I'm on my computer, just refreshing, 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 just like... You know, the the Nightmare on Elm Street jeans came out. Like, for uh, for the time it is here when they come out, it's usually like 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, I need to get this poster. And I'm just fixated on getting these posters until uh, I can get it. But I missed that one, so I'm kicking myself in the butt a little bit. Uh, I like I like the horror movie posters. And a, and a, and a Rockin' Jelly Bean Texas Chainsaw Massacre poster? Oh, man, I missed out big time. To be fair, we have so many posters, we never put them up on the yeah, wall. Yeah, they, they go right into my giant binder of movie posters. Uh, uh, BD, Mondo is great. They have some great soundtrack records for iconic movies. That's true. Um, they do it. There's Waxwork Records that also makes great vinyl um, movie soundtracks. Uh, they do a lot of horror stuff, too. Um, so ch check those guys out. If you like movie and horror stuff, uh, uh, Mondo, um, uh, a bottleneck gallery, uh, uh, waxwork records, Vice Press. These guys are great. They they do all, all kinds of really awesome memorabilia stuff. Um, okay, what's the next release this season? Our house is looking for work flannel and wrap dresses. The shirts are coming soon. Yeah, um, probably by early March. We'll yeah. have a, a lot of. Shirts. Yeah, the next release is we can we'll start we'll yeah. uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll get through some of uh, that pile of previews. The next release is the Blue Bird Selvage. So this is a lightweight. You can see it's not this like the darkest indigo. It's more of like a mid blue indigo. Yeah, it yeah. looks lighter. Yeah, it looks a little lighter in the picture, yeah. but uh, it's a little bit darker than what you're seeing there. Maybe it might depend on your monitor, but. Nine and a half ounce weight, 100% cotton, classic raw denim in a lightweight form. You've got that red line selvage ID here as well. Now, this is great because we often, 
whenever we do summer stuff, we're always doing a lot of lightweight, mm -hmm. light blue mm -hmm. options. And th those are fantastic, don't get me wrong, I love making those things, but this not for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Some people, I mean, there's that, that true blue raw denim nerd, raw denim guy, raw denim head, that wants that dark look, right? They, they don't want to compromise too much there, so this gives them a slightly lighter than like the the yeah. darkest indigo but yeah. it's still very dark this is a great color it's it's very like old school jeans kind of color yeah you know it's not the dark dark indigo that we see like every day now but, yeah. yeah yeah this is more of a vintage tone mm -hmm. dark yeah. blue very if you were nice. to ever find like a you know a dead stock pair it mm -hmm. would be more in line with this yeah. color so that's the bluebird salvage nine and a half ounce weight a hundred percent cotton coming out on friday check out that leather patch it's like this this pebbly looking, yeah. marbling. Uh, I, I don't know why I said it's a pebble. It's more like a marble mm -hmm. effect here on that leather. So very very nice. Coming out on Friday, super guy, weird guy, easy guy, and then we've got uh, no, oh no, no ladies ones, ones on this yeah. one. So just uh, super guy, easy guy, and weird guy on the blue bird selvage. Uh, yeah. Anyway, if there's questions about it, let me know. Let me know. And Vitali. Ask Jaws. It's not Jaws. I wouldn't mind Jaws. Jaws would be good. But not, not, not yet. Um, Ray Tattooed Boy, Mondo is great. I agree with you. I, uh, yeah, there, anyways, I, I kind of want to bring, I got like a great Jaws poster. I want to show off one of my posters. <laughs> Let me know if you want to see my posters. I'll, I'll whip out the binder. Um, uh, BLB Monster writes, when's that orange hoodie coming out? I think we just received it into a warehouse. Yeah, I don't think we got the zip in yet. Right, yeah. We got the, the, pull the pullover and the crew neck. Yeah. And uh, those are going to be releasing pretty soon. Pretty soon. Pretty yeah. soon. Um, Curtis Simpson, will NNF have jeans in the metaverse? Not if I can help it. <laughs> um, you, you know what? I, I watched a... I watched a couple things about that this week, and like, I, it, you know, it's one of these things that keeps popping up in industry news, and it's the most annoying thing because it's the biggest scam ever. Um, let me, you know, I, I, I always hear people telling me like, oh, this is going to be the future, this is going to be the future. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, really? Number one, do you own a VR headset? No? Okay, so you're not even, you're not even in the game yet. Number two, did you ever play Second Life? Or was that just reserved for some, you know, online nerds, for, in, in your opinion, right? Like, number one, I, I, I do own a VR headset. I got an Oculus Rift. I was on the pre-order for that. Like, we, I had that way back in the day. You know, I wasn't part of, like, MMOs or anything like that. But, you know, I've, I've, I know people who were. But, like, norm MMOs. massively multiplayer online, like... Uh, uh, like well, World of Warcraft, uh, Second Life. Uh, mm -hmm. Second Life is a little bit different, but you know, even uh, what was that Club Penguin? Like even even these like places where you can have an avatar and live in this world, and it's like, you know, the the idea that we're gonna be interacting like this to me is just it's like 3D TVs. It's like the next oh my god, that's gonna be the next thing. I'm like yeah, but nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to put these things on their face and interact like that. All right, VR for. Uh, I agree. And Second Life, I mean, there's a lot of people who are into that world, like, yes. for a, a lot. But I think the difference is, like, you know, it, it, people didn't, like, really, like, aside from costumes that you buy for, like, you know, your character or mm -hmm. whatever, it's, like, it's not a world where, like, oh, we want this, like, nice jeans. Right. Or, like... Or I'm not going to pay premium. Like, right. I'm not going to pay $70 for a jean, Right. You know, to me, it's this idea that, you know, you've got these companies who are like, I'm going to create this new marketplace where big brands can now sell you nothing for a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. Like, a lot, you know, it's not going to be like, remember when we used to buy ringtones? Mm -hmm. Number one, I never bought a ringtone. But like, they sell you a ringtone for a dollar. And it's like, mm -hmm. seems like a lot of money for a ringtone. But I think the music industry was very happy to, to get that dollar from you, that right? That makes so much more sense to me. Like, that was your identity. Like, how you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yourself, yeah. Like, yeah. that shows how you show your character. And in a way, like, the, the costumes and all yeah. the Warcraft or whatever, is, it's similar to that. But, like, I, I, it's just that the thing is, like, yeah, there's going to be a certain amount of people who would enjoy things like that. You yeah. know, buying limited edition, whatever, on the meta 
verse and just you know interact with them with their friends yeah. but like it's just not gonna be the future of, no of fashion I, it's industry. not gonna it's, it's just... not gonna be the future it, this is the current scam of the fashion industry i will i will say that right now Everyone wants to sell you nothing. They want to sell you nothing. They want to be able to replicate it 10,000 times yeah. and sell you nothing. Right. Like, if you're buying clothes, even if it's super mass, yeah. you know, made things, you still have to stitch each one of yeah. those clothing. Yeah. It's a lot of work yeah. involved in that. Yeah. And then you can't sell, like, copy yeah. and pasted things the same price. Right. I mean, I get annoyed in a video game when they want to sell me a costume pack. But even then, I'm like, okay, if I really want this costume pack, maybe I'll buy it, and it's like eight bucks, and I or nine bucks, and I get all these costumes for all the all these characters. But like, this is a way for a big brand to be like, oh, you can get this baseball cap with our logo on it on your avatar for basically a thousand million percent margin. So, anyways, we're I'm not I'm definitely not going to get involved in that. Um, I mean, let me just talk to like VR headset. Had an Oculus Rift since day one. It's been in the box since for years. You put it on. You're you're in there for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I'm like, oh, I've had enough. It's just this, you can't sit there and be there all day. Who's gonna want to sit and watch a concert like that? Yeah, right? no, he says it right, Johnny. Crumhorn VR gives me motion sickness. Yeah, you can't sit there and do this for for two hours. Yeah, even. I mean. I see the benefit. I can see the use of VR, all kinds of uses. Look, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's fun to play a game in there yeah. for a bit. I but went on a VR roller coaster before. That, that is the best use that's of the VR, by actual the actual best use. In Montreal, they have a roller coaster at La Ronde where they give you a little VR headset and you ride the roller coaster. So what you're seeing is like you're in a, uh, a, like a fighter jet like flying through a city. And you're seeing like you're going like this. Yeah. In in reality, you're probably going like this, yeah. but it feels like you're going like this yeah. because because you're seeing. Yeah. It. But you feel, you feel the G it, forces. Yeah. You feel the speed on your body, and like you feel the pressure. So it's like that's a really really interesting way to use yeah. that. But I mean, I don't know. I'm not like, hey, let's all go to a virtual concert and then buy virtual merch. Like, virtual con concert also is yeah. the weirdest thing. And it's, like. It's like a live concert yeah. recording. I could watch the Blu-ray or, you know. Yeah. But uh, the other thing is, like, the just graphically speaking, I mean, it looks like Xbox Live from, like, 2008. Like, it's just, like, they, you're kidding me? That's the future? It looks a lot like the past to me. So, or, you know, it's barely, the graphics are barely better than your Nintendo Wii avatar. Yeah, but you don't want to be too realistic with that. No, I guess like, not, but it's just, it's, you know, it just, uh, it's got, there's nothing appealing there for me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I was a pretty early adopter on a lot of these things. In fact, give me one second. I'll show you how early adopting I was on VR. No, oh, I know where you're going. <laughs> Let's read some comments. Um, let's see. VR video games are still a super niche thing. It's not mainstream. For Metaverse to think it will go mainstream is delusional. I agree with you there. How many of you have one of these? <laughs> the uh, Nintendo Virtual Boy. It has a, it's supposed to come with a little stand. It really, you know, back in the day, you know, when this thing came out, you had to like crank your neck and like play it like this. Like the stand would be here. Instead of having it a strap to your head, I guess they, they figured it would be... I don't know why they never came up with a strap for your head for this thing. But because to be, it's so huge. It is it's huge, but, like, but this came out in like 90... When did this come out? 95, 94, I don't know, something like that. But the VR headsets haven't gotten smaller than this, not by much. I mean, they're still about the same size. Uh, but yeah, Nintendo Virtual Boy. 1995, this lasted for a year, but, uh, and uh, Amiv, A-M-I-V, where's the power glove? I actually don't own a power glove, but uh, they are so bad. They are so bad. Um, uh, Rocky, super hot, LOL, did not expect the virtual boy, true OG. Yeah, man, I mean, it wasn't really VR. Um, it had a 3D effect. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, 
they you know, called it virtual. They called it virtual boy. Because <laughs> uh, Meta is the new virtual boy. Meta is the new virtual boy. That is that is a correct and true mm-hmm. statement. Um, yeah. Don't don't wager on the on the on the metaverse. I think you're uh, I think a lot of people are trying to convince you into yeah. it because they have a lot of this yeah. Uh, yeah. you know to uh, to to try to extract you extract from you. Um, Amiv, yes, the power glove rarely worked. Except if you're trying to land the plane in Top Gun. Now if you get that reference, you are a true video game OG. Uh, Matthew Bradwell, this smoke, I would be all over a new, sorry, I would be all over a weird guy high. Well, let me tell you, Matthew, over the years, the weird guy has increased in rise. Um, if you own an older pair, I would say before 2015, 2015, 2015 2016 is when we started to yeah, incrementally uh, increase the rise. The newest batches of Weird Guy are higher than, you know, they're the highest they've ever been. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, we have, and the pocket, slight pocket adjustments. There's, with our fits, there's always little things that have gone on over the years. If there's enough of a complaint about the tiniest little things, like, we would fix it. Yeah. It's just that, like, you know, I mean, the word guy is pretty good as it yeah. is, so just these, just didn't want to mess with it too much. Yeah, it wasn't enough to warrant a name change, but just these little incremental yeah. changes. Um, Matthew Bradwell, oh, I will check, or I'll recheck the size, guys. Yeah, you might surprise yourself. Yeah. Um, Eric uh, Makedo, wish your jackets were longer. They always seem so short. Well, our denim jackets are... A little bit more on the vintage style of things, so they're supposed to kind of come to your, your waist. Waistband, yeah. Right. Um, now, if you want a longer jacket, that's what the chore coats are for. So we've got mm-hmm. the chore coats for that, and we also have the zip chore coat that's going to be coming out in the fall. I showed that last week, I think. The yeah, maybe the, week, the week, yeah. week before, probably. Yeah. So I've, I've showed that off. So we do we have we do have some longer jacket. Uh, Jackets coming, um, but yeah, the denim jacket is more designed on the vintage side of things. Yeah, and we've like, you know, with the MyJ, we made the sample, and that came out like really long. Yeah, because the shrinkage wasn't calculated properly, and then we saw it, and it just it doesn't look no, it good. Doesn't that look design, right. like the stitching and all, it yeah. looks great because it's shorter. Yeah, like it's... if if you have a mega long torso, then it that only worked if you have a mega long torso and it actually hits your waist. Like we, yeah. we we gave that jacket to Tristan who, yeah. who works in our our, our Montreal Tatanyoko and he's like a real tall tall yeah. guy but he's got a long body yeah so like even with the jacket hitting long it hit him right at his waist so yeah. I can understand if you have a long torso and maybe our jean jackets yeah, yeah. might not hit you at the right spot I understand that concern but yeah I think our jean jackets hit most people where we want it to hit so yeah um. A- Amiv, did I miss something in the Weird Guy fit discontinuing? Oh no, Weird Guy is not discontinuing. Uh, we talked about how we've made incremental changes to the Weird Guy over the years. You know, just pocket shape, rise adjustments, you know, maybe even pocket, uh, back pocket placement things. So those things have changed over the years a little bit, a little bit, but none of the changes were enough that it warranted like a new fit. Mm-hmm. Right, so we it always it's always remained the weird guy. I would say it's it's like the five hundred one in that respect where that has gone. Through. Yeah, but five hundred one. No. Yeah, yeah, five hundred one doesn't really. <laughs> you know, if you look like, on the website, you'll see five hundred one tapered leg, five hundred one wide yeah. leg. You'll see you'll see a million different descriptions of five hundred one. But if you go back to like vintage five hundred ones, and like you know, you th- there are all these kind of like raw denim books that talk about the history of jeans. And you'll see, like, there have been many incremental changes of that fit over the years, detail changes, things like that, but they still called it 501, right? Because it, it wasn't, I mean, I would say back in the day, those changes weren't so dramatic mm-hmm. enough to change yeah. the, that yeah. number. Now, looking back, yeah. it looks like there's a big change. Yeah. yeah. It, it, maybe in 100 years, they'll look back at Naked, we'll have a Naked Famous book, and uh, there'll be a little blurb, Beza and Risa, 
We're on a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> For the extent of future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully one day there's uh, some, you know, naked and famous denim archivist in their, their, yeah, in their nice. never-ending pursuit of old jeans. If you're watching this video a hundred years from now, thank you for doing the work that you do. And uh, yeah, this is a message from beyond the grave probably. Mm -hmm. So thanks for all your support and keeping the Naked and Famous Denim brand alive. And, and into the next century. Into, that's it, into the next century. To the next millennium, hopefully. This is gonna be real. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this data survives. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, uh, Curtis Simpson writes, favorite boots to pair with your jeans. I've got a favorite boot fit. You've got you, your, I'll show you my favorite boots. That right here. Yucatan main guide boot. I've got, I don't know, four, five pairs of these. My favorite boot of all time. I have more than that. I might have more than that. <laughs> I probably have more than that. I have a lot of these. Um, this is my favorite boot. I like it. It's clunky. It's got this big, thick Vibram sole on the bottom. They have different soles now. They're a little bit softer. You have a, your version. There's a ladies' version of it as well. Um, yeah. My green ones? Your, your green ones. But you also, what's that brown one you've been wearing? No, your black ones. Yeah, these ones yeah. are my favorite. Yeah, Risa's got a pair too. Yes, I wear it in the winter time because it's a real boot. Yeah. And then, yeah, the sole is like it's thick it's a and... it's a thick sole, but uh, I forget the name of the sole, but it's a lot oh, softer. Sure. You can see that it's uh it, it's kind of squishy, mm -hmm. but it's very comfortable. I have some boots with the same sole, and uh, yeah, it, like, it, yeah, they're it's... very very comfortable boot. And then this is my favorite now. Yeah, I forget what the name of the silhouette I is. I think they call it Tokyo. DB something, Tokyo something, Chaka yeah, or something. Right. I, I mean, you. you I don't know that no, it, naming convention, but like, these are really cool, and it kind of, it's you know like, the, the lines really, you know, yeah. clean here. It looks really nice with jeans when yeah. you know if you have them rolled up or cuffed up nicely. Right. This looks fantastic. Yeah, and then if you have like a a, a jean covers the whole thing, like it looks like you're wearing a like a high boot. But yeah, it's very, it's very comfortable. Yeah, so I've I got a, a main guide boot in low, uh, the blue ones. Uh, I'll, I'll, but yeah, um, the more I ask, what's the name of that sole, Risa? I was going to go with full crepe. Mm, it's no, not a crepe it's not sole. Crepe. I don't know what the name of it. Maybe I can find it. Yeah. It's gonna be the Yucatan discussion hour. Um. A lot of boots. That's the main guide low. I like wearing these in the summertime. The sole, I could probably get these resold soon. I've been wearing these for a couple years now. You can see it's uh, starting to wear through. But with the crepe sole, be careful, because crepe soles, they look nice when they're new. I mean, you can try and clean them. That's what I tried there. But they just get so dirty. I, I, I have a bunch of crepe soles, and they just require a lot more uh, attention to keep them clean. But, the, you know, the second you, you wear them out, they get dirty again. So just be a little careful with the crepe soles, I would say. Um, yeah, big, big Yucatan fans here. Um, uh, Ferdinand. Where to get Yucatan in Canada, or do you just pay custom fees? Uh, well, we we know Yuki, so we buy directly from uh, them uh, at Yucatan. Um, but in Canada, I don't know who their retailers are. You should check out the Yucatan website. Um, they are made in the USA, so they'll ship to Canada duty free under uh, uh, the uh, what do they call it now? It, it used to be NAFTA, but um, yeah. USA, Mexico, Canada, USMCA, the USMCA. So uh, they'll do the custom stuff for you. You will probably have to pay the taxes though. So uh, remember, duties and taxes are separate. Taxes are uh, provincial, duties are federal. So um, just uh, just be aware of that. So, uh, But check out their website. They should have a retailer uh, listing for the products. Um, uh, 
Regina, it's not dirt, it's patina. That's true. Um, but with the crepe sole, they just look so nice when they're new. I'm always, I'm always attracted to crepe soles when they're new and then they get a little gunked up and they're hard to clean. That's the problem, they're hard to and clean. And I feel like they're like, they're uh, quicker and, to go. Like, it, it just disappears. Mm, maybe, but I also find that they harden. Uh-huh. Like it gets really, this used to be a lot squishier. I mean, these are old. I've yeah. had these for a long time. But if we wear like, you know, relatively new crypto like every day, like it just like your soul is gone. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, I definitely need to get these. I'll probably, I'll, when I get these resold, I'll, I'll put a, a softer sole on the bottom here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the, I mean, the leather, the, it, it, the, the shoes just age beautifully. Um, huge, huge fan. Um, yeah, can't uh, can't complain. I, well, I complained a little bit, but uh, minor complaints. Um, uh, Pedro Cortez, yeah, but I need a cup sole. My feet can't take vulcanized soles. Those hurt my feet. Ah, uh, um, yeah, I can't speak. I've never had really much of a comfort issue with uh, my Yucatans personally. Uh, the more thanks for the info. Risa, main guide boots with the black soles that you just said are super comfortable. I'll find it. She's, she's gonna find it. Yeah. Um, uh, Pedro Cortez, it's, it's 2022. There's gotta be some kind of cl uh, cleaner for those. Uh, they can put a man on the moon, but they can't make a cleaner for that. Ha ha. Yeah, it's uh, how, did they put a man on the moon? <gasps> um, what's softer than crepe sole? Risa's gonna find out right now. She's Pulling it up. I think it's the same it, sole. Yeah, is that this, right? yeah? It's the same sole as that. What do they call it? She's looking it up. Godzilla San, how many pairs of shoes do you have? A lot. I have a lot of shoes. Um, I Yucatan alone, 50, oh. 60 pairs. I think it's Vibram USA made twenty twenty one. So, or I don't know if that's the one that I have. Buy it in right. I think that's the same. I think that's the sole. Uh -huh. it, what is that? Vibram made in USA 2021 sole? Vibram USA made 2021 sole. So 2021 yeah, sole. Yeah. Soul. That's that's the sole. Um uh Yeah, uh shoes too many absolutely too many shoes. Uh, I have a lot and that's just boots and like you could ten uh shoes. I've I have a, a butt ton of sneakers. It might, personally, I own probably over a hundred, well, easily over a hundred pairs of shoes. I have a lot of sneakers that are just, they're kind of collection sneakers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have, I don't have too many shoes, I don't think. I have some at my mom still, but I got rid of a bunch of those at my dad. And... I mean, you own more than 30 or 40 pairs of shoes. Right. Yeah. yeah. I but think for regular people, that's a lot. I think a lot of women have a lot of shoes. Like, over the years, I got rid of a lot of shoes because yeah. I moved so much. But, yeah, I, I just don't, I don't think, I don't have, I, I only have one heels. So that's the yeah, difference between right. regular, like, shoe collecting women and me. But, like, it's not that much. Yeah. Media House Gang, hello, Bayzad and Risa. Hello, hello. Um, uh, Todd Hackett, wow, I thought I had too many pairs at four pairs of Vibergs. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean. <laughs> that's a lot, it's still a lot of money, right? I've been, I've been doing this since like before, at, at around 2008 is when I started collecting, you could, collecting, buying Yucatan boots. That's, I, that's when I first got my first pair of Yucatan, um, I, I can show you them. They're 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 definitely a weird boot, but this, I, that that's that started my obsession with them. But before that, I was buying sneakers, and I was buying you know two three pairs of sneakers a month, and then that's that was for like co collecting sneakers, and then of course I was just you know buying random Converse and things like that just to wear, and uh, you know and when you're in the fashion industry, you just obtain so much, um, but yeah. Yeah, and up till like this year, you were buying like at least like three pairs of Vincennes a year. At least. at least three a year, but sometimes, sometimes three, three a, a season, season. Yeah. sometimes more than that. So um, 
I've I even even up until a couple of I mean last year I was buying mostly uh, Yucatan slides or Mon Italy slides like I got these right suede I've got I got shearling ones I've but I also buy every color like so I I, I put a kibosh on shoe buying this year and it's almost we're the, just past the midway of February point I haven't bought a single pair of shoes this year yet mostly because I haven't really left the house a lot in the last two years. So yes. that I felt like more... any kind of shoe purchases are like, I'm not even leaving the house. At least if I buy other stuff, I can wear it at home. But that's why I bought slides, because I wear the slides at home. It's just, uh, Japan's a slipper country. You wear slippers at home. But I mean, most countries are slipper countries, to be fair. You wear a lot of slippers at home. That's what they're for. Yeah, some yeah. people don't wear slippers at home. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah. Todd Hackett, I love it. It's awesome. Gives me a reason to buy more shoes. I'll show you my first pair of Yucatans, and then we'll talk more about jeans. <laughs> well, I made no such promise to not buy any shoes this year. So I already bought one shoes. Well, they're not here yet, but uh, yeah. Vitaly Petrischev asks, what do you think of Moonstar sneakers? Yeah, they're good. They are everywhere these days. I think they're very comfortable. Here's my first pair of Yucatans. And uh, I don't remember what the name of this fit was, but it had like this weird crepe sole. And I'm like, what are these boots? It's gross. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they're definitely worn in a lot. And like, they've got, look at that pull up, right? These are from like 2008. Mm -hmm. like, the, like, it's amazing. I, anyways, I gotta get these resold. Um, maybe just put a, uh, I don't know, I'll figure it out, but like, look at how cool these look. Um, yeah, the leather is beautiful great. leather. Yeah. And, uh, so that, this is what started my obsession. Sorry. <laughs> I was just like, they make oddly weird things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I like oddly weird things. And the weirdest pair of Yucatans I own are these, um, which are a hair on hide with this green kind of leopard print on them. Uh, so I, I think this is, uh, it must be cow, um, but uh, just a super, super weird pair of Yucatans. And they do this all the time. Um, you know, I, I, I believe, Yuki told me that he, he made very few of these. And uh, there's this other, I forget their name, I met them once, but in France they have a store and they carry Yucatan. And the owner ordered a pair for her, uh, themselves, and uh, I think only us have them. I would, I would be, yeah. That? I thought it was the other boots. No, these ones. Oh. These ones are super rare. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I could be wrong about how many there are, but there, there's not many of these out there. But uh, they're definitely weird. They're not for everybody. I like weird. Um, the more awesome boots base at. Well, thank you very much. Um, okay. Uh, Todd Hackett. Those look like a, a quaddy, quaddy grizzlies. Uh, okay, yeah, I, 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 I don't know, but uh, if you say so. Um, uh, Mohamed Rakib Jurel just woke up and straight to the live stream. Malaysia represent. Malaysia in the house. Thank you so much for joining us here on the live stream. You know, we've got 92 viewers on the live stream right now. Everybody, I'm going to say it. It's that time. It's that time of the live stream. If you haven't hit that like button yet, now's the time to hit that like button. Let's get those likes up. It obviously helps our uh, helps more people find this live stream. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and become a member of the Naked and Famous Denim family here on YouTube. So uh, get that out of the way. We'll probably do that one or two more times by the end of the live stream. <laughs> but uh, that's it. You know, we don't we don't advertise. We don't do any of that stuff. But I do ask if you can hit the like button uh, and uh, you know help us grow this channel. Um, Pedro Cortez, I've been wearing nothing but uh, skateboard shoes for going on 23 years now, and sometimes I'll pick a pair of Nikes and I'll see them cheap at Ross. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I never got into, like, the only skateboard shoes I ever had were, like, Nike SBs, mm -hmm. and I never rode a skateboard in my life, really. Skateboard sneakers are so comfortable. Yeah. I used to be wearing, like, I used to wear a lot of uh, Vans, and they're yeah. just, like, they're, like... Bouncing. <laughs> yeah, I've never. That's not true. I've owned one pair of Vans that I never wore. 
I think I found them for like super cheap. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, these are like everyone's wearing them. I might as well get a pair of Vans. Mm-hmm. And I put them on. I'm like, I don't know. They just they didn't look right on my feet. Oh, you know, oh, maybe I because see. I never wore them before, and then I just they put them back in the box, and I like never... the ones that, that doesn't have any shoes, strings. And stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like a slip, slip on. Yeah. yeah, they look a little. I'm not a big fan of those. Either. Yeah, I never got into that. And then uh, big Converse guy. I have a I have a bunch of Converse. Um, yeah, those are just great everyday shoes. And the other thing I like about Converse because I do like weird things, so you can mix and match them. So like. You know, if you got a, a you know a, a Chuck Taylor a high top or low top, you can wear different ones. If you got a bunch, mm-hmm. you know, you wore a blue one on one foot, a green one on another. Like, so I, I enjoyed yeah, yeah. that aspect. I one of time it. when I was in high school, I bought a pink one, and my friend bought a purple one, and we traded the, oh. the ones. There and, you go. There yeah. you go. But yeah. I, I, I like I guess I could do that with main guide boots now, but that would be that'd be a hyper flex, wouldn't yeah. that be? That'd be a big time flex. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Marco Cal- Calamo, supporting Naked and Famous from Italy. Well thank you very much for tuning in from Italy. How do you, how do you say hello in it- Italian? Buongiorno. 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 You know what? I should start all the live streams with a different uh, international greeting. Oh, that would be fun. Again, would super be, annoying. Would it be? I would, I would, you know, at least learn to say hi in more languages. Buongiorno. Um, and how do you say it in Japanese? Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. There we go. We got that. I know that. I, just, uh, <laughs> I was testing you. Uh, <laughs> how ha asks, I was thinking of getting the mainline selvage chore coat, but decided against it when I saw the chore coat doesn't show the selvage. My question is, why does the chore coat not show the selvage? That's a good question, um, and I don't have a good answer for you for that one. Um, it might have just been the way that, I don't know, that's, uh, it's probably in there somewhere, but uh, I don't yeah. have a good answer for you for that. It, it, it's definitely an oversight. Does it show it anywhere? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they forgot to bust it on the outseam. Uh-huh. On, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it might have been an oversight. Um, but that said, it is still selvage denim. Mm-hmm. You know. I own suit, like vintage overalls. You have to understand, in the early days of selvage, in the early days of denim, that wasn't like, they didn't put the selvage on the out seam. They didn't put the selvage in certain places because of, uh, well, they wanted to show it off. It wasn't like special. A, a special detail. You know, I've got, in fact, I even have in the office in Montreal a vintage denim jacket that has selvage on the, on the inside of the jacket, but they surged on top of it because it's like a colossal waste of time. Yeah, super. Reason right, super waste because because it doesn't need it. Yeah. But they also just weren't thinking. Like right. it was just like we we always surge the edges of all the fat, like any exposed mm-hmm. you know edges on a on a on a garment. So we always surge it. So if you think about it in one respect, and now this is just me probably blowing smoke up someone's butt, but. In one way, this is more vintage if you think about it, yeah. uh, because it, it, we're not using the salvage in a way that is like, hey, we have to show it off. We're just making the garment because it's mm-hmm. the garment, right? So I have overalls where you don't see any of the salvage, and then I, I was looking, you know, looking around, and I noticed on the inside of like a, of, of a side pocket on the front of the overall, they had a little bit, and I'm like, oh wow, like there it is, and they didn't hide it as a detail. It was just just put it there, right? right? If you were to open some of the seams on that garment, you probably would see the, uh, the you know, the selvage hidden in on a, on a felled seam or something like that. So, um, you know, it, of course, you know, we love denim. We love seeing that selvage, but it doesn't change the fact that it is a still a selvage garment. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, showing yeah. off that detail is nice. I agree. I think it is nice and it probably should have been there, but um, in in... If you think about the old school, and we didn't think about it in that respect. I'm not. I'm not trying to say. I'm not trying to, you know, say. Hey, we wanted to make it more yeah. vintage by hiding it. No, it might have just been an oversight. But yeah. if you find it, you you know, for example, like if you were to find a, a, an old chore coat and you didn't see the selvage on it, it doesn't mean it's not selvage. It might be in that garment somewhere. So like, don't discount something because you don't see it. Um, because if you are into vintage collecting. You might just pass up on a on a you know on a gem because 
mm-hmm. you might believe it's not salvage. I mean, there's still like things that are like salvage <clears throat> fabric, like fabric has self edge. Maybe not denim because it's such a you know iconic thing now, but like shirting fabrics or whatever, like that is salvage. That's just not advertised as as such. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's true. Oh. Yeah, some some people don't even know that it's like a a feature. You know, mm-hmm. they don't mention it. Um, L was here. Uh, can we get a black slub with gold hardware and salvage ID, please? Faux gold to get that price point down if needed. We could do. You know what could be cool if we did gold hardware editions of some like mm. core options, like left hand dual gold or. Uh, you know, black, solid black salvage gold. We do actually have gold hardware because we made the real gold salvage. We made I, we might be restocking those soon, but we have the real gold salvage where we had 24 karat gold plated. It's gold plated, but it's still gold. Uh, 24 karat gold plated hardware made to match the real. I think what was it? Uh, I forgot what carat gold it was on the salvage ID. I but, don't remember. But, but yeah. it was a real gold oh, yarn yeah. that we used on the Selvage ID. It's like the jeans contain like 0.02% gold or something like no, that. It was like 0.4% yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It, was, it, was... It, was, it was a small amount, but it was definitely real gold. Um, so that was a pretty, I, I thought it was a pretty fun jean. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the button looks great. Like button. It looked really, really good. Yeah. I, I don't know how much. There might be very little in stock right now, but I know we, uh, we're going to restock those. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, Dis Smoke writes, I've always been afraid to buy a denim jacket because I have really long arms. Let me tell you, I also have really long arms for my size, and the denim jackets fit me pretty well. Um, let, me, let, me, let me show you. Yeah, but if you're tall and have long arms yeah, like for the body, like maybe it's six five. Yeah. Maybe. But I think also the fun of denim jacket is sometimes you can peek the the shirt, um, or the sweatshirt, like, like outside the cuff. Yeah. Oh, I got my hair all over the place. <laughs> so, yeah, and like if you want to show the cuff off. Right, like you, you can definitely wear your jean jacket like that, right? Like, like a suit. You know, you always want to have a little bit of your shirt showing. Um, but yeah, like I, for my size, I've got long arms. Really, don't have any issues with this. But yeah, I think it is nicer to have a little bit of that showing. If you've got a watch, it might be nice to show that off as well. Um, so, I, I don't feel too, um, you know, don't feel like you're not going to be able to wear this uh, mm-hmm. for that reason. I'm going to keep wearing this jacket. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is actually I, I can show that off too. We got the Katechu fabric sample. So this um, I showed off a couple of weeks ago, part of the fall winter twenty two collection. We had something called the Katechu denim, and that was a, a, a fabric, dark indigo short slub on the outside, um, with a natural tree bark dye uh, on the weft. So it's a warm toned denim. It's kind of got this like earthy green tone, um, but when they made the fabric, they forgot to put the weft in. So our sampling kind of got screwed up. So this is the same warp, but they, they used the white weft instead of the proper uh, Katechu dyed weft. So we just got the fabric sample in now, and you can see, anyways, you can see the comparison here. Um, it's the same warp, but that's what you know a weft color mm-hmm. change will do to a fabric. So you can see just how warm it is. On the outside, you've got that like brownish green coming through the warp, and you can see that weft very clearly, like uh, you know that earth tone brown. So uh, that's the Katechu denim that's coming for fall winter 22. That'll be kind of like a follow up to the turmeric. Um, this is a very handsome color. Very very nice. Very I'm looking cool. forward to that. Yeah. So this sample is the, is the proper warp, but not the proper weft. Um, but yeah, anyways. Yeah, it's a shame. That it's a shame. It's, it's still a nice fabric. Don't get me wrong. Um, uh, don't get me wrong. Beautiful fabric, but uh, that that was the way that we ordered it. Anyways, they just we just received that in the mail yesterday. So they they they, they completed the uh, the sampling properly, and uh, we'll have that. It'll look like that for production. Um, 
Okay. Uh, when is the Elephant XS coming out? I, you know what? Let's segue into Elephant XS. We've got Elephant XS right here. Uh, 20 ounces, heavyweight, dark indigo warp, white weft. No, sorry. It's got that steel, steel colored gray weft. Why did I say white weft? <clears throat> So we've got that steel tone weft with that chromed out selvage ID. This is the follow-up to the Elephant X, which came out for fall, winter 21. This is the 2% stretch version of it. And now, 2% stretch isn't a lot, right? You don't really feel it. You feel it a little bit. When you put it on, you yeah. feel it. When you put it on, when you start to wear it, you start to flex out those elastic fibers and they'll start to stretch out a little bit more with wash and wear. So. This is gonna be coming out in March. Um, now, this is gonna be, my production schedule has me receiving items, um, like I'll have the, the super, I, I don't know exactly what's coming in um, what week, but like week one of March, week two of March, week three of March, we have a couple of different batches of fits coming in. So we'll have them available by end March. Um, just pay attention to our release schedule. We post that in our email newsletter. So be a newsletter subscriber and we'll have that out. I haven't put out like, I know in previous seasons, I put out a, a, like a complete list all in one shot, but just the way production's working right now, we're dealing with a lot, a lot of delays of shipments. So everything is kind of, it's like week by week, things are changing. You know, it might be on the production schedule, but that's based off of, you know, fabric arriving by a certain time, but it, things aren't arriving as they should. So um, we should have these out by mid to end March. So that's gonna be in time for Indigo Invitational 3. Um, we'll start talking about that. I anyway, we can talk about that uh, in this live stream too. I mean, we've, we, uh, uh, there's also, there's the Indigo Open that's going on. That's like an Instagram contest, but Indigo Invitational, a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, I think it's it's not just, I mean, it's on Instagram, but they have the website and everything to register. It's, it's gonna be a little bit bigger, but um, yeah, I know a lot of people are waiting on that one for the Indigo Invitational. Um, yeah, I got stuff everywhere. Did I pull that out too much? No. No, it's just oh, okay. making a loop. A little bit. There we go. <laughs> um, okay. How ha asked, got a faded gradient red core yet? Not yet. Not yet. Um, what I, you know, when I have this stuff, I will I'll definitely show it off on the live streams. Uh, I mean, we sh we show off everything on the live stream. So if you're if you're waiting for something, just uh, just keep keep tuning in. We'll we'll get to it. Um, uh, Zano Child. M writes, hello from New York City. Hello, hello. Uh, would love a blue weft or more brown weft like Fox. Just got into Naked and Famous a couple of months ago. Well, like uh, like we just showed off, the Katechu dyed weft. The Katechu selvage is coming out this fall. So you can expect a new warm brown, greenish brown earth tone coming out mm -hmm. in the fall. Um, Todd Hackett, it's nice to see the comparison. Yeah, it, it really is nice to see the comparison between, you know, weft colors and weave differences. Like, because, it, look, if you're a denim head, this is the kind of stuff that interests you. If you're, and that, that's it. That's all that makes you a denim head. You know, we talked about it. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if this is the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, garners feelings of, uh, of joy, then you're a denim head. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Mike Knight, Mike Knight writes, what is the color of the string on the rainbow core? I have to get them hemmed. My tailor is an old lady that lives down the street. What is the color on the hem? Of the string, of the thread. Oh, of the thread. Sewing thread. Um, um, you can see, like, it's the same color as everywhere else of, of, of the stitching. Yeah, so if, she, if she's see. a seamstress, she'll have, yeah. she'll have it. Yeah. Or it's she'll have something that matches, like, yeah. pretty close. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, how, how, really want to get that strawberry milk jacket, but I'm holding out for the fall winter 22 jackets. 
Yeah, man. The, the uh, strawberry milk jacket will be pretty limited. That's going to be available only at uh, Tatian Yoko, Naked Famous Denim NYC, and James Dant. So that's, uh, uh, that's it. The, that's a very small run of those jackets. Uh, so if you're looking for it, you know where to find it. Uh, this smoke candy weft. We do have like a candy kind of colored weft coming in the fall. Yeah. Um, I, I might have showed that off a few weeks ago with the uh, Japan Heritage Kasuri. So that's, uh, that's coming soon. Um, uh, Rodrigo uh, Larry Nega writes, MIJ10 or MIJX, do we know anything yet? Yes. Yes, we are. We're sampling it right now. Well, in, it's next in, month. Yeah. So, yeah. so as soon as we get the sample, probably how many weeks do you think we're away from that? I would say four weeks. Okay. So in about four or five weeks, we'll have a sample to show off. So it's in the pipeline, and you'll see it here first. Just keep tuning in to these live streams, and you will get the previews before anyone else. In fact, we'll probably show it off here before Brandon gets to see it. Probably. We're only making We're making one, one sample for, for yeah. The, the sample. Yeah. yeah. So stay tuned everybody. Um uh, uh Todd Hackett writes, any bag fetishes? I have a thing for workwear tote bags. I also have or have had a ridiculous amount of bags. Um as you can see I like luggage. So there's quite a luggage stack over here. Um, yeah, I have a lot of backpacks. You have a lot of backpacks. Um, yeah. I? You know, yeah, the, the backpack to get, uh, we have it on Tate and Yoko. It's the parachute, uh, yeah. the parachute bag from Epperson, Epperson Mountaineering. Mountaineering. <laughs> Packs up into nothing. It weighs nothing. I gotta show it off. But it's very strong. Yeah. Like, we carry, like, laptops and stuff in there. And when we travel, and it's like it it feels like it's just gonna rip, but but it's been through a lot and it hasn't really ripped, so that's a good good bag. Um, yeah. I think we're also getting more colors this uh, this next uh, season, right? We're adding colors yeah. to that. So th this is the bag. We have we have it in a bunch of colors. Um, but, I mean, oh, what do I have in there? Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I got snacks in here. Oh, no, look like at that. Three years I got, ago? Uh, oh, it's definitely Tetris, older. Japanese Tetris gummies. This is what we had when we... I, I don't know. This it's, is it's, old. It's, it's very old. Um, but uh, it weighs nothing. I mean, and it the beauty is, is that it all folds up into the, the, the pack in the top here. Yeah. We're sold out on Tatenyoko right now, except for the tote We have the bag. tote bag version of yeah. this. Um, but tote bag is good, too, because it will make a great, like, just, you know, bag bag you keep in your purse yeah. or whatever. And, uh, I don't know if you make carry purse. These are actually made from parachutes. So, like, the material is super strong, super lightweight, and airy. So, um, if, you're, if you're concerned about weight... This is an easy bag to carry around because it just crunches up into nothing. Super tough, and uh, and they look cool. So, yeah. <laughs> this next time. No, I think it's, yeah. it's. You know what? I will eat a gummy from that. Oh, although the, the expiration, expiration is, is 2022 December. No, 2021, 2021 December. Expired candy? No problem. I'll eat it. It's, expiry dates are uh, just a suggestion. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, candies don't really go bad. Yeah. Um, uh, Television Blitz, enjoying the stream while doing a DIY sashiko repair on my natural indigo loom states. Any other natural indigo genes in the works? Um, well, anything more in the works? I think we're doing a replenishment of the natural indigo loom state. I know we're running low on those right now, so I think there's a replenishment in the works. Other than that, oh, Brandon is working on securing some more hand-dyed natural wow. indigo. So that's happening. Um, Those are going to be... Yeah, they're going to be... Pricey. Pricey. Maybe around $1,000 this time. The price... Yeah. 
It's like this with that I stuff. Just imagine, like, just old guy sitting in, like, in a... In a barn, basically. cold yeah. wooden thing and just, you know, dying strings. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a, a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and there's a wait list, and they certain Like, it's nothing that you could mass produce. And even when we make them, we're going to make enough for, like, 30 jeans. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's it. And then you wait again. You know, it's just... Uh, that's the way it is. <clears throat> um, Pedro Cortez, what about a denim trucker cap? Yeah or nay? Been wearing trucker caps for over 20 years. I wouldn't mind doing a denim trucker cap, um, you know, with the mesh back. Um, we have new baseball caps coming out this, uh, this spring. Uh, if you saw the post that we did for the, uh, well, which gene was it? Was it not the Chinese New Year? Um, the Rainbow Core. We did uh, the post on Instagram. I think I was wearing the, the baseball cap in those pictures. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, that, that's coming up very soon. That was that was our raw denim baseball cap. Um, uh, I remember uh, one of you did a rant about the big scam on bottled water, and I agree with you. I don't personally remember that rant, but it sounds like a rant I uh, I would have went on. I wouldn't um, have any problem. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a big bottled water guy. Um, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things it's, that grind my gears. It's a very useful thing when you're not at home. At home, I drink tap water, but yes, I agree <laughs> that you should be able to drink water outside, outside of, your, of home. your home. Yes, but. Yeah. Charging three or four dollars for a bottle of Dasani. Oh, yeah, they, they shouldn't charge. That it's a much. little, it's a little much if you don't, if you ask me. Um, uh, uh, no saints. Any plans for a new Selvage Foundation shirt? Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, I have no I plans at the moment. No plans at the moment. Um, okay, Curtis Simpson. When you go to industry events, do you wear your newest jeans or your most faded jeans? I, it, it, over time, it has changed because I used to always wear the newest jeans. But then what would happen is like every six months, I would be like resetting. So what I usually do now is I will wear some of my most faded jeans and then I will wear the newest denim jacket or mm-hmm. so I can still like show off and like, you know, show people like the fabric. Like people, people want to see stuff on, of course. And like, you know, we're, we're we don't have a runway show or anything like that you know so uh, we we're the models at the at the trade shows you know us wearing it people get to see it how it looks like on yeah. um so yeah, yeah. usually I'll, I'll just wear like the newest uh, uh jean jackets and tops mm-hmm. i always wear the newest things yeah it's like it's so hard to sell women's clothes just on the hanger or flat image yeah so. Pe- people want to see yeah. yeah i guess men's clothing is all so you know, we kind of under, like, well, it doesn't that, change so much, right. right? And it's also that for women, we, we constantly come up with the new fits just because, you know, that's the nature of women's wear. Yeah. Um, Marco Clamo writes, recycled water bottle salvage incoming. I can, recycled water bottle yarn, I, that'll probably happen at some point. Um or at least some kind of blend up. Like, that's very popular now. Like, yeah. It's, it's, but, it's a thing now, right? right? But I think the main thing, which we've done a couple times already, recycled. is the recy- recycled, like, cottons. Like, because there's a lot of cotton wastage from jeans production or any kind of fabric production. And recycling that seems like the easiest and most... denim thing for us. Yeah, and it's also, like, you're not wasting, you know resources trying to make something into yeah. something else. That's true. Like, That's true. Like this is already ready. Yeah. And it's like it's, yeah. it's just chopping up and putting it in the it's yeah. spinning yarns again. Yeah. So uh right. Uh, Todd Hackett, Risa never got to tell us about her bag collection. I don't really do I have a bag collection? I'm not a very You have that Celine bag that's pretty nice. Right. Um, like I like a small these days I like a uh, like a crossbody bag yeah. that just like I have everything in there yeah. already so that I don't forget anything yeah. and you know I just every time yeah. I, I yeah. go out I grab that but so, you like more so. vintage bags like you're not gonna go and run out and buy a new like Gucci bag or anything like that 
Yeah, I mean, I just don't. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I can't spend five thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it's not, not, it's not your style. <laughs> no, yeah. not really. Yeah. I also like a, a big tote bag. Yeah. Like big tote bags are like just. Yeah. You know. Well, show your tote bag, the one you made. Yeah. Well, I think we've shown might have shown it before, but some people might not have seen it. BD writes, Risa, my wife saw you in the wrap dress and it was sold. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm so excited yeah. about the wrap dress. It's it's going to be mm. probably ready like a little bit later in the season, closer to the summertime, but that's okay because you can't really wear it here, here yeah. now anyways. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm look, looking forward to it. This is the bag yeah. that I like. I washed it and you kind of lost the starch. So yeah. It's kind of a little too soft. Yeah. Now, but. but but Risa chain stitched all of the uh, the lettering here. You can see that. So that was all done by yeah. like hand operation. So Risa's a, a chain stitcher, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what uh, that's what she made. Yeah. Wonder Wonder Looper. Yeah. Uh, Todd Hackett. It feels like Bayzet has much more stuff than Risa. Well, it's just I mean. We share a lot of stuff. I mean, yeah, the luggage is wear, ours, like, yeah, right? Yeah, I do wear a lot of his stuff. I mean, shoes we can't share, but like, you know. Yeah, sweatshirts and things like that. A lot of that is shared. Um, but I also have a lot, like, like our movie collection, that's our collection, mm -hmm. right? Like, we, we collect a lot of things together, but... Uh, a lot of things these days together. Yeah. Like, before that, I mean, I moved around a lot, so... The, I had a lot of stuff for somebody who moved around so much, but like you know, it's just... yeah. But I've been a hoarder for my whole life. Like I never like, like I really like video games, comic. Like I have so much toys. I have so much stuff. Like I don't let go of anything. Like it's just it, th these days I'm actually working on it. And like you know, the other day I threw out a bag of wires because yeah. I just had a. I've, I have just a million wires. <laughs> but our yeah. bag of like cables went from this to like this. Yeah. Like it's not. Yeah, it's that not. It's it's much it's moving in the right direction, yeah, but yeah. I, I I need to uh, I need yeah. to lighten the load a little bit. Um, uh, uh, Faraz Mustafa Khan, a cup of something delicious and naked and famous live stream. The weekend has officially started. Well, thank you right. for starting your weekend yeah. with us. We've got. Our cups of coffee here. So another thing that we collect are, uh, you know, old vintage uh, Fire King mugs. Oh, Frank, yeah. hey, can we have a chocolate milk, Jean? Oh. Oh. Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know where this is going. Um, uh, uh, Todd, Todd Hackett, maybe it's because she's Japanese and you're Canadian is uh, why I have more stuff. No, no, no. I am a little bit of a hoarder too, but but again, like every time I move, especially when I move countries, I can't just you know yeah. leave stuff or bring it all. Like when we moved from Canada to here, we dumped a lot. We dumped a lot, but because we we're like you know adults and also you know like two of us yeah. moving, so we we had like. Um, what do you call a it? moving like a, company. Yeah, a moving yeah. company ship a bunch of boxes. But like before, when I moved to Canada or to the US or coming back, like you know, I was younger and it was just like I didn't have an, enough of like valuable things for me to ship it because it cost thousands of dollars. Yeah, so that's true. I had to get rid of a lot of yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't moved that much, but like when I moved from Ontario to Quebec, from like Toronto to Montreal. Um, I dumped a lot of stuff. Like when I went, when I basically when I moved to Montreal, I was starting. I brought basically just my clothes, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that's a good way to get rid of stuff that you don't. Yeah, I got rid of a lot of stuff, value. but there, there's a ton of stuff in my like my mom's place. Like yeah. there's a storage room there, tons of stuff. Yeah, it uh, goes good. Yeah. Forgotten. It gets forgotten. But sometimes you dig through and you're like, oh, there's a lot of value here. And then. Oh my God. I, I, I cleaned up my dad's place, like yeah. my room and dad's place, like a while ago. And it just like, it took me, it's such a tiny room and I haven't lived there for like 20 years. But like, it's, it took yeah. so long because there's so much stuff. Yeah. Just, it builds up. If you don't, if you don't do it regularly, um, it'll build up. And, and that's, that's one thing I've certainly been. These days, I'm really careful of like what we're bringing in, and I'm slowly working on getting stuff out. And if you, if your mentality for most of your life is like, don't get rid of anything, it's hard. 
And like I have t-shirts that I haven't worn in 15 years, but I got a t-shirt collection. And like there, I've, I've got tons of graphic tees, tons of them. And some of them I don't even care about anymore, but I'm like, yeah, but it's part of the collection. And it's just, it's hard. So eventually I'm just, it's easier for me if I have like, uh, if I could give it to somebody that I know will appreciate it than it is for me to like toss it or, you know, put it in a, 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 a like a, like they don't really have thrift stores here, you know, like you, you yeah, it's, it's, yeah, they do, but. Well, they, yeah, but like you go and they give you 10 cents for it. And like, I feel like, I don't know, because the, the thrift, it's not like Goodwill where like if you bring it to a Goodwill or Salvation Army or something like that, you give it to them and then like it, it gets sold for like a, you know, a quarter or, you know, it, it's going to people who. Are, yeah, I mean, those things yeah. exist. It's just that it's not as yeah, like. It's few and far between. Right. Like yeah. th- there is a way to donate to Salvation Army, but like. I, I, I don't know. I've never done it. It's not like there's, like, boxes everywhere that yeah. you can, like, you know, yeah. put in. They're, like, here, the, the secondhand stores are stores. Like, you'll if you bring them, like, a branded item, they'll give you 10 cents for it, and then they'll put it on the shelf for 10 bucks. Like, you know. So, it, it is what it is. I, I, I just, anyways, I have a hard time getting rid of stuff. <laughs> Long story short. Uh, okay. Um... How How writes, Handai Tokushima Ayazome cap would allow people that can't afford the jeans to get at least at least a piece of that masterpiece of denim. That's a good idea. That, that's, that's, a that's a good, good idea. idea. That's a very good idea. Um, uh, uh, okay, White Lightning writes, Coffee Milk Denim Yu Shishi collaboration. I don't think we need uh, Yu Shishi on... So, I'm calling it UCC because that's what they call it here. Um, so UCC is like a coffee brand here. Um, we did coffee dyed denim before. Um, but yeah, actually, so to be upfront with the, with the milk denim, so milk denim, strawberry milk denim, the next version, it'll probably be chocolate milk. But I also threw the idea of coffee milk or cafe, you know, latte. cafe latte uh, denim. Uh which would kind of look the same. Like, cafe latte would just be a lighter brown version of what chocolate milk would be. So, I don't know if there's room for both of those ideas. I think chocolate mm, milk is a stronger idea. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cafe latte. I can have as many cafe lattes as I want. Um, uh, electric bamboo glue. Coffee milk denim? Right. So, yeah. I, I think cafe latte, I think chocolate milk is the way to go there. Mm-hmm. But what happens after that? Banana milk? Oh, banana milk. That's could be. not bad. Yeah. <laughs> How about hair metal inspired denim? I'm hair metal inspired denim. <laughs> <laughs> How do you make yeah. it into yeah. jeans? What, what do we do? I feel like yeah. you have to have holes in them, no? Maybe. It might require some holes. <laughs> um, uh, Eric Makedo writes, bring back cookies and cream. Interestingly enough, like two days ago, I was talking to Brandon about cookies and cream. Um, oh, they're the jeans. Yeah. We're, we're, I like the parallel thinking that's going on here. There's a lot, a lot of stuff uh, like that. Uh, Star Wars collab. I think eventually that might happen. I mean, we just have to meet them and figure out what their terms are. I suspect the fact that there's a million Star Wars products that they might be, they might be easier to deal with. Um, but at the same time, they might have huge expectations because like they, they work with like big global brands yeah. so and the different like difference between us and like you know a million other licensed products and stuff it's that like a lot of the times you can just like you know use their artwork and put it on the t-shirt or like yeah you know whatever like it, it's not that hard it's you know it, it, even in the approval process they're like okay this is our art so you can use it yeah. like this fine good and then, but our case, like we have to develop the fabric. Yeah. So that's that's very difficult. They've never most of those they people they've never that. dealt with that kind of yeah. like creative outlet. So. Yeah. Right. They, even if they work with like a streetwear brand or something, whether they're working like a smaller streetwear brand or like you know a big chain, you know mass market store, it's it's often okay. Here's our blank T-shirt or whatever sweatshirt. Throw your thing on it. Maybe we'll throw our logo on it as well. And boom, done. And that's what they're selling. But yeah, custom developing fabric and getting that through their 
like it's, it's probably it's just not the level that they're used to dealing with and mm -hmm. and also we're doing a lot smaller quantities than you know what you know, they're Walmart used to right gonna, well yeah Walmart yeah. is gonna do millions of pieces we're gonna do tens of pieces you know <laughs> hundreds of pieces it's not very it's not the same level um, Brad Copland, oh damn, I'm actually on time for once. Howdy from Surrey, BC. Well, thank you very much and thanks for making it to the live stream, Brad. Um, any plan on bringing back the real Indigo Diet hoodie with such a nice looking hoodie? No major plans for that. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Invis Ian, I'm late, I get it, but you're late, D doesn't matter, you're here. That's what, <laughs> that's what matters. Um, uh, Eric in, in Mini, I'm a little bummed you aren't planning another Salvage Foundation tea. There's enough demand, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not too yeah, late. It's not too late. It's not too late. Uh, DC is in the house. Thanks, Invis Ian. You know, another thing I wanted to show off today, um, because somebody was asking me on the Instagram, uh, was the linen denim. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the, the raw linen denim that's coming for fall. So I just wanted to show these off. What's the weight of these again? I think they're nine ounces. Lighter weight, non-selvage, but they've got like this great drape to them. And they come in these really nice, you know, summery colors. So you've got that like classic, you know, beige linen look here. Nine wow. ounces, right, I was right. So, uh, Yeah, it, this is very nice. And the yeah. suede patch. Oh, this looks luxurious. Yeah, super nice. So if you're looking for like a nice airy, you know, if you're, if you're a linen person, you like linen, this is going to be a great way to experience that. And then it comes in the black here as well. So uh, these will be available in like jeans, so all the fits. They're available in uh, the chore coat. We've got a new jacket called the Smart Jacket, which has a, is a collarless kind of chore coat style jacket. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the raw linen yeah. denim. You see that here as well, so you can see the weft. The black especially has like, you know, these, these nice neps throughout the fabric. You can kind of see it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, black looks very denim-y. Yeah, it looks yeah. really denim -y. So typically, I mean, you know, th this is a, a, a denim weave, so a, a, a three by one denim uh, made with, uh, what is, what's the composition, I forget. I can look right here on the inside. Oh, it's 100% linen. 100% linen. Yeah. I, thought, I thought it was a linen cotton for a second, but 100% linen. So uh, you can enjoy the summer with these. Wow, black linen. Could you please share the care instructions for linen? Um, you want to wash these cold. Yeah. And don't put them in the dryer. Yeah. And, and you probably need to iron them even if you hang dry. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, linen is... The, the, the idea is that it's going to be like, you know, a little bit of like crinkly. Yeah, and... puckering going on yeah. once you wash it. Um, but yeah, I think that's the beauty of linen though. It's... Yeah, it's it, it has that natural look to it. Mm -hmm. um, it so yeah, it, it's a little bit more flat to start off with, but over time it will start to pucker and crinkle uh, mm -hmm. as you wear it. That's linen. That's, you know, if, if that's not what you like, yeah, avoid the linen. Um, but they, it's perfect for hot, like humid weather. Yeah, like it's, it's just so breezy. Yeah. Regina asks, "Can you show off the sky high?" Well, you, you can see it's there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show it off. Um, there's, I, I think I mentioned it before, but we wanted we did some changes to the sky high from the original sample to the production. So this is the sky high denim, uh, ten ounces, and it's like a let me just. 20%. Wait, I got to, yeah, the, the hemp composition might have changed a little bit from oh. sampling to production. I forget what it is now, but um, it's around 10, 15% hemp uh, fiber. So this is the original Sky High. Um, it's a, it was a broken twill selvage, but we actually changed it for production to a tighter weave uh, two by one denim. So looks wise, it actually looks very similar. You'll notice that this one doesn't have the pocket, doesn't have the, the, uh, the, the belt loops. That's because this is a wash sample. And we just felt that this denim had a little bit too much of that like hemp 
kind of uh, texture to it. It's kind of had, it was a little too gritty. So we changed the twill to kind of uh, have less of that uh, hemp feeling on the inside of the denim on the weft. So it's a lot softer, and then we rinse wash these for production to make them even softer. So you're gonna have the same look, that same light blue look. This is a little crinkly just because we never ironed it after we washed it, but uh, it's gonna be a lot softer and it's gonna come rinse washed. So uh, they'll be a little bit different than what we showed in the sampling. You can ignore the stitching color and stuff here. Again, this is just the wash sample, but you can see that even after wash, the color is practically identical. Mm -hmm. We've got Brad Copeland joining the Naked and Famous Denim family. Everybody, welcome Brad to the family. Uh, but yeah, that is gonna be the main difference between the sample and the production. Like, it's gonna still have the same stitching color. It's gonna save, have this vegan uh, Durango patch. So this is a, a leather alternative, uh, not uh, not actually leather, but uh, it looks like leather. So it will, that will you'll, you'll have that on the production here. So that's gonna be the main difference. Lightweight, light blue, made with, I have to double check, but it'll be like 10 to 15% hemp uh, fiber in the sky high. So if you like lightweight, light blue denim, this is gonna be for you. If you want something a little bit more classic, we've got the Bluebird Salvage coming out in just in just a week. So it'll be out next Friday. So that's gonna be the, the main difference here. You got the light blue, lightweight with a little bit of hemp, rinse washed, 100% cotton, nine ounces with the Bluebird. All right. Um, Okay, currently wearing a new, Frank writes, currently wearing a new pair of the Kasuri Cerulean jeans. Amazing jeans, I love the material and color. Thank you, he says thank you, no, thank you. Enjoy the jeans, my friend. Um, 150 people in the chat, killing it. Nice. All right, that's fantastic. You know, it, every week this chat grows and uh, our views grow, so thank you so much everybody for being such a great member of the community here. We're, we're, at some point, this is gonna be, it's gonna be, you know, sometimes you tune into live streams and like the chat is going so fast that there's mm -hmm. just no way, but. Uh, I mean, we're not covering yeah. every single comment yeah. now though. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, the, the, at some point it might be impossible, but we'll, we'll have to develop speed reading abilities. Um, okay, uh, decibels, you tend to, to favor a tighter weave, uh, a lighter weave or does it vary frequently? Do you tend to favor? Mm, it depends on the fabric, mm -hmm. right? So if, if the fabric justifies a tighter weave, I find like lighter weight stuff tends to justify a lighter weave, uh, sorry, a tighter weave. Yeah, but when it's tighter, it's more crispy. So if yeah. we like, like that, we like that, or sometimes we wanna do more loose weave so it's a little bit more like soft and air, air. Yeah. But also you might do a, a looser weave when you're combining it with a slub yarn so that you get more irregularity. Mm -hmm. You know, tighter weaves are gonna give you more uniformness in the fabric. So it, it's, I don't think we have a favor. It yeah. just depends just on what we're trying to create yeah. on, on any particular fabric. Um, how, how, what fall winter 22 samples you got to show off today? This one, the Katechu, we just show, we showed it off a few minutes ago. Um, Coming to you from California, would the sky high be good for a warmer climate? That's Jacob Brunch writing. Absolutely. That's what it's for, really. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, if you're if you're in California, if you're in Miami, if you're in Texas, this is you know if you if you've got that hot summer sun, mm -hmm. uh, you know if you're in Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, this is the kind of jean you're gonna want to wear in the summertime. I mean, the summer here in Japan gets hot. Like, Humid. It's really humid. It's 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 brutal. Yeah. Like, and and that's why like linen and hemp and like uh, that fiber is very popular here because it's just like you know because you sweat you go outside and you sweat so yeah. like breathability and just moisture yeah. wickering, wickering wicking wicking yeah. uh, properties yeah. very useful. Yeah. So uh, if you're in a warmer climate, definitely these are options you should be looking at. Um, okay, uh, Frank Iglesias, Jojo updates. The only update we have is that they got back to us with their comments and we are working on, working it. on it. So uh, that's just the way these, these work. So we, we, we submitted our uh, designs um, 
they make comments on it, things that they want us to clarify or change. You know, there might be something in the graphic that we have, and they're like, okay, you know, you need to format it this way or you know change this or that. So we got to do those changes, resubmit, and then they'll if everything's kosher, then we'll move on to the next step, which is going to be sampling. But uh, we can't get into sampling until we get design details approved. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at, we're at right now. And uh, yeah, every, everything is moving along as it, as it normally would. Um, Electric Bamboo Glue 2, have you ever designed a jean for a rainy climate? Rainy. Um, I, I wouldn't say that we've designed a jean specifically for a rainy climate. Um, we've had the, uh, I forget what we called them, but th we had a Teflon coated jean once mm -hmm. um, that was water resistant. Yeah, I, I think you called it Teflon coated jeans. Maybe we called it Teflon coated jeans. That was like jeans. a long time ago. Yeah, it was right? a long yeah. time ago. Um, so I don't know if that was specifically rainy climate design, but it, it did, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, bead, um, you know, any kind of moisture, anything you'd spill on it would just bead off and like, you know. Yeah. And uh, I would think that like any kind of wax coated fabric is, is kind of better yeah. for rainy weather. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know what the rainy weather gene would be. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, I don't know what a specifically rainy temp, rain, rainy climate gene would look like really. I mean, do you, do you want your jeans to be waterproof? I mean, it's kind of fun as a, as a detail. It's not breath right, yeah. Well, it's I less mean, breathable. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I don't know how it yeah. would fade also. Yeah. Maybe it wouldn't fade because... It might be it, harder, but you're going to wear the, you're gonna wear the uh, coating off. Yeah. yeah, and then it's no longer waterproof. Yeah, right. That's, no longer, that's <laughs> it. Um, Benjamin Curry, is there a release date for the linen fabric? Not yet. Probably April. That's probably, yeah. probably April. Um, Kenny Ingram writes, I just gifted my girlfriend a NOS pair of NG gray trouser girl. A new old stock pair of NG gray. I don't know what that is. Trouser girl. I believe it's from the first season. Any idea on that style? NG gray. If it's trouser girl, it's probably first season with the side pockets, the slash pockets. Um, you know, the early, early Naked and Famous stuff, in fact, we had more women's products than men's. And let me, here's, this is a good story. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. The women's assortment was larger than the men's assortment because before Naked and Famous Denim, Brandon actually used to run a, a small PR company. Um, and he had more connections with women's magazines than men's magazines. So I guess, you know, there were like Montreal brands, Quebec brands that it basically was his job to get them into magazines promoted and that kind of thing. So Brandon had all these connections in these women's magazines. So he's like, well, since I have a connection here, I should make women's stuff and then that way they'll write about me. And because I, you know, I could, I could have, I have friends here. So he did, um, he made a lot of women's jeans. But yeah. Brandon wasn't, the early, I would say that until Risa showed up, the women's collection was made by me and Brandon, and we weren't. Uh, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not, we're not, we're not girls. You know. <laughs> well, it's also that like I mean, it's easy to as a man, especially like you know, it's easy to see what like oh, women's denim brands are doing this. Women's denim brands yeah. are doing that. Okay, so we'll, we'll bring that over to our yeah. brand. But it really doesn't work that way, especially because we don't do any washes. We don't yeah. do any distressing. We don't do super stretchy fabric. So, like, it's it just that, like, I, I don't think, like, we realized that the, the niche market, it is still very niche. It's, it's yeah. such, such a small uh, market, but the niche market of raw denim for women is the, the type of line that we need to make yeah, as a right. brand. We, yeah. We, 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 yeah. So, yeah, the early days, there was a lot of fashionable fits. Yeah. And uh, the rises were very low. 
that was the time. That was the time. <laughs> you know, I remember looking at some of those old samples, and I mean, like, it was an insult <laughs> to zippers, how small some of those zippers were. Like, what's the point? Yeah, was, there was no point. It was so funny. Like, we'd have yeah. a zipper, like, this big on them. Yeah. But, and my problem was that pockets. Like, you have to, like... Yeah. Pockets are so important. Back pockets in women's jeans are so important. Mm -hmm. You have to make the butt looks yeah, yeah. nicer. Yeah. And that was not the yeah. case. Anyways, Anyways, you know, <laughs> Risa has been uh, guiding the ladies' collection ever since. And, uh, right, we, 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 we put that into her dear hands. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we, we, look, we know, we know our fabrics and stuff, right? right. It's just, we're, we, we're guys. You know, we know what guys like, and I think girls know what girls like. Well, no, it's, I mean, again, like, it's just, like, a, a very niche area. And then I, I think we, I, I hope we're doing, like, service to that that very little market that, mm -hmm. that we have. And I think we're building those, yeah. you know, yeah. customer space, which is the most th fun things about that. Yeah. Jacob Brunch writes, as a young denim head, which of your fabric weights would you recommend me to try? Currently breaking a pair of Love Tan 12. I was going to say Love Tan 12. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, whether you're young or old, I would say here's the thing about young denim heads. You're more adventurous when you're younger. And I think you can stand more uncomfortableness. So you can probably after Love Tan 12 and is 13.75. Yeah. So you, next step, you can go heavier. Yeah. Yeah, when you're young and, uh, you know, I don't know what it is about being young and fashion, but you are definitely braver and you want to try everything. And and you're more willing to sacrifice comfort yeah, for, for, for the look. You know, <laughs> yeah. when I was younger, I was wearing the skinniest jeans I could find. I, I really loved, I mean, I also wore the widest jeans I could find. I mean, I was very uh, on, the, on opposite wide uh, ends of the spectrum because it just depended on the time. But... When I discovered skinny jeans, I was, pfft, that was it. That was for me. And uh, I wore the skinniest, tightest fit. I, I just wanted to wear super slim jeans. And uh, and I could, so I did. And I didn't care if, you know, they were uncomfortable. I looked cool. Mm -hmm. I looked cool. Uh, so, yeah, when you're young, explore and try everything. And then you'll, that's the only way you'll realize, like, what you, what you like, like, you know. Yeah. And... Yeah, I'm not saying that older guys can't wear heavyweight or anything like that. No, no, Certainly no. you can, yeah, right? Yeah, if you like right. it. But yeah. then you're not, like, you know, when you're younger, you you, you can, like, take it a little bit more. Yeah. Even if it, you, that's not your thing, ultimately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, but it takes it takes time to develop your taste. Mm -hmm. So try everything, you know. Don't, but don't, you know, you don't have to go out and buy everything all at once either. You know, wear your left hand twills, wear them in, break them in. When you're happy with how they've turned out, Try another pair, you know, maybe a colored weft, a heavier weight denim. Trade them in yeah. for twenty percent discount. That's what we do at Tate yeah. and Yoko. If if you've got a, a a beautifully worn in pair, you're not wearing them anymore. Maybe I'll grew them, whatever it is. We 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 can take them back at Naked Famous Denim NYC or Tate and Yoko and give you credit towards a new pair. Um, okay, um, this, you know, I was saying the the the, the, the chat. If we were bigger, we'd be moving fast. Now the chat's moving fast again. Uh, there's a lot of questions here. If I missed your question, sorry. You know, there's there's obviously a lot of questions coming through. I try, we try our best to uh, you know get through them all. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Nicholas Bo, I <laughs> lol. I stole my sister's really expensive leather pants in the sixth grade. Lol. <laughs> when I was in high school, I wanted flare jeans, and they didn't have flare jeans. Uh, for men, so I had to go to the girls' section and buy flare jeans, and I was really proud of the flare <laughs> jeans that I had. I'm sure my butt looked like a girl in them, <laughs> but yeah, I was very. I'm like, I got flare jeans. I'm, I'm a cool guy. <laughs> very proud yeah. of that. Um, uh, but yeah, that's that's the beauty of being young. You know, you try you try everything. You know, you can, yeah. and uh, that's it. You're braver. You're definitely braver. Uh, when you're older, you've kind of developed your tastes, and you're like, "This is what I like. This is what I stick with." And I'm, I'm and I like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm like work shirts and hoodies. Like I am, I am the naked and famous denim wardrobe. I'm work shirts well, and I hoodies, mean, you, and we make it. Yeah, we make it, but that's the what stuff I like. That we like, right? Yeah. So I, 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 I just live in it, and it's that's the way it is. Um, okay. Uh, 
That's a good question. Crystal, what's Reese's favorite fit for me? For you. Yeah, what do you like to see me in? I like a uh, strong guy. Mm -hmm. that, that, you know, you wear the nightshade strong guy. I, I think it looks very good on you. All right. Good. I like wearing, I like wearing those. Um, do you like that I uh, wear my jeans short? Like, like ankle level. I mean, that's your style. Mm -hmm. Like, if you, yeah, that, that is your style. You can't. But do you change. like it? Do you like it? Sure. All right. Yeah. Good. I like you as who you are. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Pedro Cortez, I picked up some flared jeans when I was in my 20s. I've seen this one pro skater wearing them, and I was like, I got to get some. Flared jeans, whether it's in trend or not, definitely makes your leg nicer longer like so it's it's sometimes it'll look weird because it's not in trend but it's just always forever a great jean for for yeah i i like like good. i like groovy guy um i'm i'm working on getting back into my groovy guys uh, i'm i'm almost there i've been uh i've been selectively dieting recently i've been i've been dropping a little weight hopefully it shows um, <laughs> my weight is usually like right here, so uh, yeah, yeah but uh, hiding it. yeah, I've, I've, I've grown a few pairs of jeans as of late. Um, uh, Jacob Brunch, how do I get my wife into raw denim? Um, start with the uh, stretch salvage, that's a good one, or rinsed wash styles. Yeah, the thing it has to be come like. I think with a lot of people, even with men getting into raw denim for the first time, if you're coming from, you know, buying your jeans with a lot of stretch and a lot of comfort, it's a hard sell to go from that and you're wearing that every day and you're comfortable in that to being like, hey, you should wear this crispy fabric that's really uncomfortable all the time and it'll probably take six weeks until they, they feel good. So I hope you're in for it for the long haul. Yeah. So... That's why we have things like the stretch selvage, jeans with comfort in mind, cashmere stretch. You know, it doesn't have to be the most hardcore fabric from day one. For us, it's important that you get into the jeans, mm -hmm. right? So if you're... If you're as and discover the joy of, like, fading. fading. It's yeah. It's really something you need to go through yourself to, like, really... Yeah, to, like, once you're into fading, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. And, oh, well... You know, the, 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 even the rinse washing that we have, like, it's not like buying some of the stuff at the mall that is, like, you know, buttery yeah. soft day one, right? It still has a little bit of crispness to it. It's just it breaks in faster. So instead of a week or two or three or more, you've you got that break in in, like, two days, right? It, it's an easy way to get into it. So you have to make it easy for the person, whether they're, they're male or female. But for, for the ladies, I would say, yeah. Rinse wash pair, something with stretch, mm -hmm. something that's gonna feel a little bit more familiar. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, the fit is important. So like, it has to be something that that they can wear every day. Like, it, it has to go with their style. Um, so, I mean, it would still be like, it's not a requirement to wear them every day, but for you to experience the fading and all that, like you have to wear it quite often so it has to be a fit that like you know it, it goes with the rest of her outfits yeah so i think those are some good tips mm -hmm. uh give that a try and uh yeah i mean check out tati yoko we've got a lot of lady styles um there's something for everybody there and the newest products all have fit pictures on them too so you can see what they look like on less there's less guesswork with that so and also a lot of the core products we're going to be updating those photos soon to have the on model photos there so that's all coming soon uh so just just uh bear with us he says one leg at a time yeah one leg at a time that's true you know i, I just the side rant I, I think i repeat my words often if anybody watched that Nightmare on Elm Street video, I think I said gruesome like 40 times. I was, I, I only after like editing it and playing it back, I'm like, boy, did I say gruesome. I wanted to have a little counter going in the corner. <laughs> gotta be, uh, gotta be careful with that. Yeah. Well, uh, I said classic so many times yeah. in uh, one of the videos. Yeah, it, it happens. You know, yeah. once you got that, and it's a word in my brain, it just keeps uh, yeah. floating around there. Um, yeah. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, but, 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 but. There's so many questions. I'm trying to find a good one. To add. They're all good ones, but I got to... Um, somebody asked something, and I'm just trying to find it where they asked it. Um, and now here I am just saying, um. Okay, Kenny Ingram, I know you love Yucatan. Have you ever tried boots and shoes from Sperry or Raincourt? No. Um, I've never even heard of Sperry, Raincourt. Rain, Raincourt. Uh, Sperry I have. Raincourt I'm, I, I sounds familiar. Um, the only other boots I've ever really got into were Eastland, Maine. Mm -hmm. They had some nice boots. I've had some uh, Horween uh, boots from them. Um, what other boots have I had? I can't even remember. I mean, yeah, it's my, my, my adult life has been Yucatan. Yeah. It really has. I've, I've, I've never even owned a pair of Red Wings before. Yeah. I've never owned a pair of Red Wings. Um, I'm a creature of habit, man. I'm, I, once I like something, that's it. I'm that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like recent, like, like even when we go shopping, like mm -hmm. we have the same stores we go to and it's just like boom, boom, boom. Like grocery. Oh, every time. Every time. And then we, sometimes like, you know, we go venture out to a new thing and then that, if he, he likes that, it's just like next time it's like, okay, we go back, we go back, we go back. Yeah. Or restaurants, like we eat. I, I eat at the same restaurant. eat the same food like straight for like two months and then we discover something new. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, vi I'm, Yeah super creature of habit yeah I, if i like that's something i like it it doesn't change i'm 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 very uh i don't know if that's a male trait or not i think it might be but uh Maybe. in in that respect i'm like uh, it's it's uh I'm, I'm very predictable in that respect um okay uh somebody was saying i, I may switch yeah i may switch to classic uh okay i'm not sure what that was in reference to um Okay, Kenny Ingram, the, uh, the cashmere denim can definitely be a great gateway drug for girlfriends, wives. Nothing is more luxurious. That is true. The cashmere denim, you're going to kill them with kill them with comfort. Kill them with comfort. Um, okay, I want to show off a couple more things today, and then we'll get into snack time, right? So there's jeans kind of everywhere flying around the place. Another, I, I don't know if I updated you guys on this one, but uh, there's another jean for spring 22 that we're rinse washing, and that is the ultra light tech denim. So this, I showed it off before, this is like the five and a half ounce weight denim made with a cotton nylon blend. So super lightweight. The only problem was that in the wash testing, we found that the shrinkage rate was a little bit more than a typical unsamphorized denim, but not, denim. sorry, a little bit more than a typical samphorized denim, but not quite the level of an unsamphorized denim. So like the shrinkage was a little, yeah. a little too a much yeah. for, for most folks. So we decided to rinse wash it. Like the ladies jeans, we were gonna rinse wash them anyways. And this is what the ladies sample looks like. So it still has that crispiness. It's just not as super crispy. Like this is really crispy. This still has the crispiness to it. Don't get me wrong. It's not just gonna flop around. It's flopping around a little bit, <laughs> but you know, it still holds its shape quite yeah. nicely. And you can see that the color is a little bit more blue than purple. So I think the color wise, it's a little bit nicer off the bat. So just be aware that for production, it's gonna be slightly less crispy and a little bit more blue uh, for final production. But I think these are good changes because yeah. I think ultimately we might have, it would have sizing been a would have been a problem. Yeah. But, yeah. but the, the thing is like, it's even after wash, it's still gonna create those creases really like, you know. Really it's, it's, it's intensely. Like, this is like, like paper. paper. Yeah. Yeah, like. Yeah, it's gonna make a If you crisp very that up, it, it stays. Like, yeah. so. So that, that, this is still a good fading jean. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't have much or any flex to it. I mean, listen to this. Very yeah. tight weave. Very tight weave. Yeah. So when sizing for these, and we'll talk about it in the video, like it does, it really doesn't flex. Yeah, it doesn't give. Um, I would caution on sizing higher. Mm -hmm. Like if you're, if, you're, if you're looking at precise, go up a little bit because these aren't gonna move with you so much. They're gonna be light, but it's like wearing a nylon jacket, you know, uh, like a spring jacket, you know? 
Um, it, it's the size is the size. This isn't going to move around a lot. So be aware of that for the tech denim that's coming out. Anyways, just like with every release, we, we put the video out before. We put all the information out before. Um, but yeah, there, there, there are always changes slightly here and there between sampling and production. We got to make sure that it's going to be um, right for the customers. Um, okay, uh, a couple questions coming through. Um, Frank writes, the color is beautiful, like those dark navy blues. Yeah, the color, I think, is, is an improvement. Nice. Um, uh, it's black left as well, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, David T., can you show off the basket weave? Easy shirt. I brought the kimono shirt. I hope that's okay. Um, but uh, we have the ba this is the kimono print basket weave. So this is coming out in kimono shirt and in the easy shirt. So the fabric is the same, just the, the silhouette obviously is going to be a little bit different. I think um, also in short sleeve. And the short sleeve, yeah. yeah. So you'll have you'll have a couple different options there. We've got, I can't read that. CB Fuller. CB Fuller. Thanks for okay. joining the Naked and Famous Denim family here on the live stream. Everybody, welcome. CB Fuller. Um, but yeah, this is the kimono print. So we do we've we've been doing these. This fabric base, oh man, it's probably been 10 years. So we, we do it in a variety of uh, patterns and they're all based on like traditional Japanese, uh, uh, you know, patterns. It is printed, so you can see it in the inside, it's, it's, it's navy, on the outside, it has that pattern. This has got this great all over print. It kind of looks like a, like a, what's it called? Like a tatami a little bit. Mm, yeah, yeah. It, it, anyways, you can see it here. This is coming uh, very soon and then this is the other Kimono shirt. Uh, sorry, there's, there's stuff everywhere. Um, now this is the waffle, indigo waffle. Check that out. The color, the color is great, losing a little bit. But, but it's a nice blue. Yeah, very the, nice the, blue. The, and it's got this great texture to it. I want to put it on. Yeah, yeah it's very soft. I like anything waffly. It like it's warmer than the the thickness because it like contain it yeah, retains it has air. Like little pockets. Yeah, and it's so soft. Yeah, the kimono shirts tend to sell out pretty quickly. Um, Definitely, especially this one, I think. Yeah. The, yeah. So, you, like, some people ask, you know, how do you wear these? I often wear them with a hoodie like this. So easy to layer up. You can layer it like this. You can wear it underneath the denim jacket. It just, it's just like a cool little, yeah, throw on piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the summertime you can wear it over a t-shirt. So just like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see it doesn't look you know weird or anything with a hoodie. I I, I wear them with hoodies all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, uh, we did address B looking 10 years younger with that fresh shaved baby. <laughs> did we address B, me, uh, looking younger with that uh, fresh shaved baby face? Well, thank you. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I, yeah. I think it's the, uh, it's the weight loss a little bit, I think. Or maybe it's the lighting, I don't know. It's the definitely the beard. Beard makes you look Yeah, the beard so makes you look younger. very crubby. Oh, yeah, I'm older. <laughs> yeah. Especially when I really have it going. Like if I yeah. if I go a few weeks, I, I yeah, it probably adds it's a lot like of a age on me. Look. <laughs> yeah, because my beard doesn't grow full. It grows very. I don't but, know. But you still don't have like white beard so much. A little bit, but like it, Brandon, when he grows his beard, it's like almost half white. Yeah. And then it makes him look really. But older. when he grows like, a beard, his is full. Like when I grow a beard, right. you can still see a lot of my skin. Like it's just, it's very sparse. Yeah. Yeah, you don't like yeah. that. No, I would prefer it to look, full yeah, on. full on. Like a mountain man. Yeah, like a mountain man. Like, I can't grow a mountain man beard. It's, it's, it's my Asian genes. They, <laughs> my hair grows straight, and it doesn't fill in as much. So it's, uh, I don't think it makes a, uh, it, it makes for a, a, a handsome beard. Um, uh, Jacob asks, could we see the mainline salvage? I don't have it here. It's, uh, it's packed up somewhere. So next week, I'll show off the mainline salvage. How about that? Um, uh, how, how, what's the estimated 
release for the strawberry milk. Mm, I would say possibly March. Possibly March. Yeah, yeah. March or latest April. Yeah. It's not going to go into June. Yeah, it won't go into June. Um, JP Morris, getting my first salvage jeans on Monday. The Clown Prince of Crime salvage. Any extra tips or tricks on carrying, on care and ironing? Um, you don't have to iron them. I mean, if you like your jeans to look crisp and, you know, without creases, then iron them. But I think a lot of people want those creases to form so that you can get a nice fade on them. Your jeans are going to fade along those crease lines. So if you're if you're getting those getting rid of those crease lines, then there's less chance for them to fade on those lines. Mm -hmm. um, and just um, if you don't want to shrink them, just wash them cold and hang dry. Hang drying is like also a way to not have weird wrinkles. Yeah. And, you know, if you tumble dry, that like it might form. It's yeah, like marbling. Yeah. Yeah. Wrinkles, yeah. So. It, yeah. If and when you wash inside out cold water with other items, don't just wash them on their own. And uh, avoid the dryer unless you're really interested in surprising yourself with what they're going to turn out to be. And I would say that if they're your first pair of raw denim jeans, after your first wash, that that's when you're going to see the most transformation because if you've been wearing your jeans for months and months and months on end, you're very used to, way, to the way those jeans look. And when they hit water and when they come out, they transform. I mean, you know, this is just one wash, right? Raw, one wash. Like you can see the amount of blue that, you know, much how much more blue these are. So if you've been used to looking at this all day and then you get this, you're like, you get that that sense of like, oh, there's something wrong here. It's not necessarily anything wrong. It's just, it's different. So be aware that you might have that feeling. I remember having that feeling after washing my raw jeans for the first time because I was used to this dark denim with these like bright fades. And then all of a sudden it was a lighter blue denim with bright fades. And I felt like something happened to my... <laughs> Something happened here, right? Yeah. And, and, and the blue is not necessarily the blue that you expect sometimes. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, this is a lot more blue yeah. than I thought. Like, yeah. J yeah. Just expect that that's part of the process and your jeans are going to constantly be changing. And there might be points where you're like, oh, that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look as good as I, I had them before. But, d but you know, the longer you wear them, the more they're going to fade and they're, the more they're going to change. And you just got to be ready for that. Um, Spectre writes, when is the 21 ounce stretch dropping? Sometime in March. We will have updates as I get them. Um, okay. Uh, Regina, 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 Regina. <laughs> Gosh, sorry. <laughs> Denim feelings. That's it. That's, uh, there's, somebody should write a poem about this. There's, there's, th that is definitely a feeling involved with washing your raw jeans for the first time mm -hmm. and getting that unexpected like hmm like you're not sure <laughs> you know you're not you don't because it's so new it's like yeah. den denim therapist De over here that's a denim therapist <laughs> um okay uh uh jacob brunch do you have any jeans that you never wash if so how do you keep them clean and how are the fades i have had jeans that i never washed for like Here's the thing about not washing your jeans. Like I might've had a pair of jeans that I wore for like a year and then I stopped wearing them and then I never washed them ever. So they end up being like a 10 year old pair of jeans that I've never washed. And how do you keep them clean? And how are the face? How do I keep them clean? Uh, they're not clean. <laughs> um, they're, they're dirty and they have 10 years of funk well, yeah. uh, built into them. Oof. Before we moved here to Japan, I had a pile, a huge pile of jeans that had been worn for, you know, periods of time that had never been washed. And then I just decided to wash them all and we threw them into the wash altogether. Uh, just so that, because they stunk. They just, they, I mean, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. So there is no tips. Um, <laughs> There's no know. way to keep it forever clean. Yeah. As, as long as you wear them, it's going to get dirty every single time. Yeah. And... Yeah, it's just if you don't want to wa wash it, still it's fine. But but to be fair, like it's not like a t-shirt or a shirt. Like definitely, there's something in indigo that makes it like less. Yeah, less disgusting. 
but they're still gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're I still gross. Yeah, yeah. Gross, yeah, yeah. Like if you wear a shirt for three, you know, months straight without washing it, yeah. it'll just be disgusting. Yeah. Or it's right. Like, jeans is a little bit different. Ryan, thanks for joining the family. Oh, thanks so much yeah. for subscribing, everybody. Welcome, Ryan, to the Naked and Famous Denim chat live stream family. But yeah, um, strategic use of antibacterial wipes. Maybe I mean you know. Never wiped the, the yeah, I I I have like if you get a little stain, you want to get like the the little spot you know clean. But it's not uh, it's not going to replace washing. It's not going to replace washing. You know, I would imagine like somebody might say, oh, if you put them in a Ziploc bag. I'm like, no, I think you're just going to fester the grossness in there. Probably. Yeah, don't. If, if they get gross enough, you eventually have to wash them or just but that's air them of out. It. It's, yeah. yeah. You could try Febrezing them. That might work, you know, but I think you're just covering to up a the certain smell. Point, yeah. yeah. Uh, how high? Do you have an estimated price on the Japan Heritage Kasuri denim jacket? Um, um, I think we didn't have the price. Yeah, in, in, probably in the high 200s. Uh, um, might be more than that. Might be more than that. Yeah. Okay. Um,. Uh, I think it's time. Yeah, Reese's face just vehemently disagreed with unwashed jeans. <laughs> yeah. I'm, for oh. a person who's working in raw denim, I'm, like, I get it. I, I understand why people don't wash it. And, you know, I mean, I don't wash it all, all the time or anything like that. But there is a point where it's like, you know what? It's, it's At enough. some point, you got to get, yeah. you got to get that wash yeah. done. So, yeah. Uh, I cannot keep the jeans unwashed. Like I've tried, you know, to hold off as long as I could, but especially when I was traveling, I could not stand it because I sit on metros, I sit on airplanes, all of those things just kind of, you yeah. know, if I'm sitting at home, it's yeah. it's fine. But. I, I could care less personally. <laughs> uh, it's just me. Yeah. I don't mind yeah. on them. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. Yeah. BD writes, I have a spray for denim, but it really just, but it's really just a refresh and I wash as needed anyways. Yeah. I mean, you could probably prolong the time between washes by like doing things like that, airing them out, maybe using a spray, but uh, eventually you got to hit that, you got to hit that washing machine. Yeah. Um, Japan Heritage Kasuri denim jacket is going to retail at $340. $340 on the Japan Heritage Kasuri denim jacket, $340. Um... Reg uh, uh, Regina writes, longest amount of time you've gone without washing your jeans. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, over a year for sure. I don't know if I've ever hit two years. Oh, like on a continuous pair. Right, like I yeah. might have had a pair that I wore and then like I definitely yeah. have had pairs that I've wore for a while and then I just might have grew out of them or whatever. And then they sat there for 10 years. But I, I've had, I've had piles yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, or maybe not some of them 10 years, some of them less, but definitely years of, of you know, time have passed. But, um, yeah, I, I, like for me, time is mostly like wear time that I, that I consider. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Evan McIntyre, not necessarily a naked and famous question. Uh, how common is it to see Japanese denim heads out on the street? I love how Japan and America share the bond of heritage and denim culture. We talked about this um a couple of times, I, I don't know if it was last week or not, but there is a denim head culture here. It's definitely different. Like every region has kind of got their own take on it. Japan, I would say that you see, you probably see a denim head guy, at least if you go out, you'll see at least one a day. Yeah. Right. Cause they have their own, they, there's a style to them. They're like, mm -hmm. they kind of wear like straight wider leg jeans. They've got like red wing boots on. They've got the long wallet and the chain. Um, some kind of like graphic vintage style graphic t-shirt on maybe like a military kind of jacket like yeah that's like a, you know a, like a, a bomber jacket or something yeah. uh, so you you always will see there's always a guy like that yeah I think it's more heritagey yeah and that's also probably part of the reason why like our brand isn't like that strong here is that like the customers who are into raw denim who are like nerds about denim fabrics are different Her kinds yeah. of heritage styles. and military style. Yeah. They really like the military style influence in the in that. Yeah. Um, 
in Europe, it's a, a lot more European style in terms of mm -hmm. uh, old school like yeah workwear. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Old school European style workwear. A lot of chore coats, um, you know, caps, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and the shoes tend to be less work wary. I find in Europe, they're they're u they're usually a little bit more dressy boots. I find. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, North America is the the biggest mix. Because it all it all kind of yeah. comes from the, Europe. Europe has its own history with denim for sure, um, but the United States and North America, Canada, the take is like you've got the the casual you know American style you know jeans and flip flops and t-shirts. You've got uh, the heritage guys who are you know chambray shirts and and, and jeans and and work boots. You've got the style guys who are raw jeans and like dressy boots and button-up shirts, hoodies and, and work shirts. It's so streetwear guys. Yeah, streetwear yeah. guys. America has got the widest variety. You, you can wear raw denim. So many like raw denim as a denim head is a little bit more. You can see it in so many more different ways. Whereas in other parts of the world, the denim head tends to be a little bit more in a box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was my box. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, Devin Hurt, you should continuously wear that kimono and show the progression. I, I could. Probably could. Uh, yeah. There's the the, uh, the the slub nep denim one that I should probably wear more. Mm -hmm. That one that I think one will fade great. really nicely. Yeah. Um, Kubi, I've, and yet I've never seen denim heads in Wisconsin. You might like it depends on what you consider yeah. what a denim head is, right? Like maybe you're not noticing. Yeah. Um, like there's one thing to be like, oh, like I recognize that brand on that guy. Like remember, we're all small brands, right? Mm -hmm. Right. We're all small brands, but you know, you might have a guy wearing you know dark blue jeans and western boots and a western shirt or or a work shirt or a Carhartt. Like our style. Or there's a particular like raw denim style that is derived exactly from that guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That 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 the person who might not be doing it as a style thing. That's just the way he lives, right? Like, and he may not be in the denim head in the in, in like you know what I kind of described earlier. Someone who's obsessed about raw denim, but or or like cares about the fabric so much. But they're living, they're living that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, they're living that 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 classic yeah. American workwear vibe. Yeah. So, they might not be able to explain what yeah. it is great about yeah. this fabric, but they know yeah. that they like it. Yeah, they know that they wear, you know, yeah. a certain brand of jeans that are dark and crisp and raw. Yeah. And they don't care about the fading process of it or whatever. They're just blue jeans to them, but that's what that's what I wear because that's what, you know, my dad wore and that's what his dad wore. So, you know, it just continues on. Um, okay. Uh, uh, okay, War, uh, the Spectre wore, wore the Naked and Famous 12 ounce stretch jeans, belt and wallet to the climb around in the Great Pyramid, to climb around the Great Pyramid wow. of Giza. Got tons of pics. Where do I send them to? Send them to Info yeah. at. Yeah, in, info at us. Info at Naked and Famous Denim. Uh, send us like, if, if they're really nice photos, Send us the full res ones, and uh, we'll, we'll share them on social media. Or post them on social media and tag us, and then I'll just share them. So that's that's the easiest way. Um, okay, as a, as a BD writes, as a library professional and book sniffer, don't be afraid <laughs> to sniff test those jeans before they're, nas before they're nasty to wash. That's true. Sometimes that's, that's all it takes. They, they smell a little too funky. Time to put them in the wash. What do you do with, like, smelly books yeah there's there's got to be a way how do you yeah. that's a good question bd how do you guys take care of smelly books there's got to be something for that you can't wash i them. mean I, I have some old books here and like they have they get books definitely have a, a musk mm -hmm. that they get definitely. i wonder what a professional book you know restore how do they take care of that that's a good that's a good question um okay uh like I know a few guys from the Indigo Invitational are here, uh, but people here do exactly what you are talking about, Kubi. Uh, right, right. So we were talking about how like if they just wear it, you mm -hmm. know, and that's. Yeah, but yeah. but there's other if you. It's less of something that they have to like consider. 
compared to like the raw the raw denim guy. At the same time, we also like the elevated version of those things, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's like in audiophile communities, you know, like at some point it's like this is an amplifier, does the job, and then or watches, you know, it's like okay, I got a nice watch, but then there's those nice watches, and then there's those fabrics, and there that way of doing it where they they kind of just take every little detail and max it out as, mm -hmm. as much as possible. Um, I mean, that's yeah. what we're that's, good. That's what we do. That's what we're <laughs> yeah. into. Yeah. Um, okay. You know what? Uh, Reg Re uh, Regina, in embrace the musk and no one will, em <laughs> will embrace you. Em embrace the musk. Um, okay. Writes W5, right? 60 degrees Celsius is the bacteria killing temperature. Yeah, it right. needs to be hot to right. kill bacteria, yeah. but then you know you're you're getting rid of all of the phase and the, right. The, yeah. Uh, BD writes: People are gross with books. Discard them. Discard and buy new, and keep your books away from liquids, please. Pro tip from a pro with books. Yeah, keep them away from liquids. Probably a good idea. Discard them. Yeah, I wonder if like bacteria or maybe there's something that might transfer. Anyway, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure people who are really into collecting books have have advice for I that. My thing with books is like old books is like you know th there's definitely people who are like you know eating chips and yeah. there's, <laughs> there's stuff in there. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, awesome live stream as usual, but got to go. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining Tubby Ninja One Three Three Seven Leet Tubby Ninja Leet. Thanks for joining it. You know what? It's yeah. about. Do we, have, we we got some snack time. I think so. Let's let's hit up this. You know what? We got Tetris gummies. These are these are a little old. I, I will eat it. I will eat a very old gummy right here on live stream. If something happens to me. Probably wasn't this. It's sealed. I mean, I, I kept it ziplocked locked in there. It's probably fine. They smell fine. They smell juicy and delicious. And uh, I love Tetris so. Check that out. You can put the pieces together there, form your own little tetrominoes. You want mine? They're fine. They're good, actually. Oh, they're you exactly want the same as it was before, I think. They're really good. All right. All right. So today's snack time. Pringles, new package and a cream stew flavor. It's cream stew, I think, in North America. What kind of cream? Like a It's like a like creamy. And then it, oh. it, it, it says that like a um, rich cheese. Cheese, finish. cream, soup, like cre flavored. Like cream stew? Like yeah. you know how the, there's beef stew that are brown yeah. and whatnot, like the creamy <laughs> version of it. It's yeah. pretty big yeah. here. Right. Yeah, Pe Pedro Cortez, those Tetris gummies are sick. How much were those and how much did you get? I mean, I found this in a backpack that I probably haven't <laughs> used in two years. Um, Over two years. I and uh, they still taste fine. Yeah. Um, how much, how much were they? they? Probably two or three bucks. Yeah. They couldn't have been much. Uh, if, I find, if I find them in the store again, I will, I will buy them. These are good gummies. These are good gummies. <laughs> Uh, thank God for preservative for preservatives. Yeah, I mean it must be like yeah. it's not even hard. It's it's like yeah. the same texture. Yeah, yeah it feel it's like still juicy and great. BD writes, I won't tell the chat about things me and my wife uh, about things me and my wife me and also my wife, a librarian also li have seen and in old books. Be kind to your library people and read with clean <laughs> hands. I can only imagine yeah i can only imagine we're fans of the library you know in montreal the 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 central library there at bear you cam one of my favorite places in all of montreal a beautiful library if you ever get to go to montreal even if you're just visiting do yourself a favor go and visit that library it's very very impressive uh i have to say I like the library big fan yeah all right all right let's try so some let's try cream this chips. cream stew chips from our from our good friends at Japanese Pringles. One thing I have to say about Japanese Pringles is the chip itself is smaller. smaller. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this yeah. especially feels small yeah. for some reason. It's got the cheesy cheesy smell. Yeah. Like a Parmesan kind of smell. Mm. 
Mm. They're okay. It's, it's like too a cheesy. Mild... It's more cheesy than creamy. Mm. But it's like a mild cheese. Mm-hmm. Very mild. Like, meh. I wouldn't it's not write... bad, but... It's like a 4-2 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's fine. They're... But it's like... It's not gross, but it's just... Not gross. It doesn't give you anything. No, I would never crave this. If they're there, I'll eat them. Mm-hmm. If they're there, I'll eat them, and I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be pleased. I'd be like, at least they're chips. You know? Yeah. At least, like, yeah. They're not even halfway. They're less than, like, what did I say? 4-8? Four, 4-2? Four, I think it said 4-2. Yeah, yeah, that's a 4-2. That's a 4-2. Yeah. I would much rather have sour cream and onion. Yeah. That's it. I would much rather have sour cream and onion. That's what I would be thinking if I ate these chips. At first, I'd be like... What's wrong with these sour cream and onion chips? <laughs> and then I'd realize they're not sour cream and onion, and I'd be like, "Why didn't you buy sour cream and onion? <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. that was a that was your mistake." Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What's your what's your score? Um. Oh, I don't know. I would say four. Okay. Fair enough. You know what? I'm gonna wash that taste out of my mouth with expired gummies because <laughs> the expired gummies are way better. <laughs> All right. You want some more? Sure. All right. Hit All that. Right. Hit that. Um, could paper denim be a thing? BD writes. Yes, okay. and we've made it before. We've made it with a, a Japanese washi paper. Um, all right. Um, you know, I'm going to answer this last question. Shouldn't probably not eat chewy <laughs> things. Um, Lee H. writes, what books do you guys read? I barely read. Um... Are there many denim books? There are several denim books. Let me show you a couple, and then we'll uh, wrap things up. Yeah. Well, Beta doesn't seem to read books at all. I think he hates the idea of reading books. Unless it's got some pictures in there. Although he doesn't mind reading, like, a long Reddit threads and blog posts and stuff. So I don't know what the difference is. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of denim books that we like, and uh, is that it's bringing it out now. Personally, for me, I like novels, too. I don't read anymore so much these days, because, I don't know, I don't go on trains, and I don't have to commute. But, um, yeah, I don't know what my favorite kinds are. I guess Thriller. Yeah. Yeah. So it, in Montreal, I actually have a lot more denim books, but these are these are just some of the ones that I have here. These two are the best for photography. Mm -hmm. the, the five uh, the the vintage denim j uh, jacket book and the five hundred one book. Yeah, that's the same people. Same right? people. This these are it's a Japanese company, uh, and I mean it's like a bible of jeans and they go over the eras and they just show off so many different uh this is my kind of book by the way no words just uh, a lot of pictures <laughs> but it, there's explanations it's in japanese and in english but they go over all the details and the history there are words in here eventually i just keep hitting on all those photo pages but uh you know They'll go over the details of a, of a particular gene of a particular area. They give you a little write-up and, like, beautiful imagery of it. So this has been a, a pretty big inspiration in terms of our photography as well. Like, I, I, I really admire how beautiful uh, the photography was done in this book. So they, they managed to collect tons of vintage genes and just make a beautiful record of it. This one covers the, the genes. This one covers jean jackets. And uh, you can see it's the same thing, you know, little write-ups and then details of, uh, you know, all the jeans. So if you can find these, they're a little pricey. Um, they're like a hundred bucks each kind of thing. But the other cool thing is that they actually, if you look at the texture of the, of the cover, it actually kind of feels like jeans. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Nice coffee table books as well. If you're a denim lover, these are these are worth the investment. Now th they are pricey, you know. So, you know, 
don't feel like you have to, you're obligated in any way. Other things that you can look for are Lightning magazines, Japanese magazine. They do a lot of uh, special issues on denim, and this one is all about vintage jeans, and this is only like 20 bucks. You might be able to find it. Uh, I'm sure you can find it online somewhere or like, you know, import it somehow. Um, but uh, it's a similar kind of style book, but they, uh, they cover a few more brands, different eras, things like that. Um, and it's only like 20 bucks. So uh, Lightning Magazine guides are usually a lot less expensive. This is more of a coffee table, you know, book. But uh, there's a bunch of denim books out there, um, and I'll, I'll show more off when we're in Montreal. But those are those are just a couple that I, I think are really nice. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Um, uh, BD, any reading is good reading. Audiobooks. I like my I like my audiobooks. Yeah, I have to yeah. get a subscription. I like my audiobooks. Um, you know, I, you, the thing is, I just never have time to like sit and read. I Even know, if, I was saying that, yeah. like, back in the days when I was on a train yeah. or, like, airplanes, like, that's when, you know, you could read, yeah. but nowadays it's just... Yeah, but even on the airplanes now, it's audiobooks, I'm listening to audiobooks, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, like, it's just so, like, you can do other things, like, I can wash dishes while listening to something, so yeah. it's so, just such a very, liberating very, Yeah, very experience. convenient. Yeah. Okay. Um... Where are you guys at that it's this sunny right now? We're in Japan. It's the morning time in Japan right now. So it's, uh, it's, it's Saturday morning for us, Friday evening for many of you. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, audiobooks are valid. Pound it. All right. There we go. Nice. There we From go. librarian. Yeah, that's, that's it. A, that's a good you know, obtaining knowledge yeah. is a good thing. The more mm. knowledge you can obtain, the better. Um, okay. I'm going to leave it at that. It's been uh, it's been great. It's been awesome. In fact, hanging out with all of my denim friends, uh, you know, starting our weekend off here. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button before you go. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, now's a good chance to do it as well. We'll be back again next Friday for another live stream here at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we have the Blue Bird Salvage coming out next Friday. So we'll have some information, more information about that coming out this week. Uh, so follow our social medias there. And of course, follow us on social medias. All the, the links and stuff are in the description below. Have yourself a very, very nice weekend. Be nice to one another. Do something nice for somebody. And uh, and we're going to leave it at that. Okay? Yeah. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay.